are live. And this is, of course, going to be the second stream for TCW. Uh, it is essentially episode two. Let me just get a few things sorted out here and we'll get into it. I need to find my charger. May as well, uh, well, it actually doesn't need to advance. Let me just double check the stream is actually going to be working on my phone. All right, I think I'm. I think I'm good. Let's uh, let's advance while this uh, while I wait for this to come up. At the moment, it kind of doesn't look like it's working. Let me just double check. Oh no, it's up. For some reason it's not showing up on my phone though. Gotta love these things. All right, uh, I think it is working anyway. So we're literally just coming off and we're following on exactly where we left off on that sort of first episode. Or first stream, I guess we would say. To the uh, to the people watching on YouTube, make sure you head over to the Twitch channel. Uh, it's basically the um, the same name, Auspicious Aussie, and you will be able to find the channel nice and easy. Let me just reset that, and I think we want to go back into the Friedman Building. Yeah. All right. For some reason on my phone, the, the stream's not showing up, which is pretty strange. Either way, it doesn't really matter. Let's, uh, let's start booking. Now, we did have a new number one contender. We had Bart Biggins winning a 15-man battle royale, I think. I think it was 15. And he got himself a television title match. So he'll be taking on Greg Gage. Uh, do I want to give it... I think I want to give it a decent amount of time as well. I mean, it's pretty It's pretty obvious who's going to go over in this match, but... Yeah, there we go. I mean, it should be, it should be a good match for the television title, so... I think I'm relatively happy with that one. Now, I did want to sort of continue our main storylines that we've got going on at the moment. So Wolf Hawkins and, of course, Aaron Andrews. I think that'll be continuing. I, I do want them to possibly face off in maybe a steel cage match or something something of that ilk. Uh, we, can't, we can't go too hardcore with it because of our product settings, but uh, we'll do something. We'll do something. Anyway. Uh, what we'll do right now, though, is we'll have... I guess we'll use the Syndicate. I mean, while they're still around, before I disband them. Disbando, Clando. Before we do that, I think we'll... We may as well use them for a little bit. Alright, so we'll grab Doc, and then... Who is the other member? I think it's it's the Elite, isn't it? So... Do I want to use one member of the Elite, or should I just go with Chris Flynn? Um... You know, I'll go with, we'll go with Chris Flynn. I mean, it's kind of a a pretty big, you know, it's a decent step up for him. Uh, 47 popularity is pretty low, though. So I'm a little bit worried about that. Either way, Aaron Andrews, I think, is going to be 
teaming up with... Hmm, it's a good question. Who do I want him to team up with? Probably Mighty Meaty would be the, the smartest. They're kind of our biggest, in terms of popularity, our biggest tag team that we have. So I'm thinking we, we yeah, we'll, we'll, go, we'll go with them. And I guess we can have an angle to kind of bring it to fruition in the main event. So with that said, I think we'll, we'll give, actually, I want to give Mighty Mo the victory. He obviously needs it a little bit more. And of course, they did actually lose at the pay-per-view to the behemoths. So things aren't exactly going too well for them. Uh, so earlier in the show, we'll have Aaron Andrews, uh, Ten of the Mighty. Actually, let's go Mighty Mo first. And Tanner. I think we'll we'll rate Tanner on Menace and we'll rate the other two guys on Entertainment. And uh, I guess we'll just do an advanced storyline for Where's the Beef, which is their storyline that those two are in. Mighty Mo wants to work without a script. He is pretty good without a script, so we'll we'll let it slide this time, I guess. Now, what else do we want to do? Uh, kind of, can we actually hire... Yeah, we can. Local workers. There we go. Let's get in uh, a couple of local workers. Uh, ooh, we could get in Grunt and Stink. Let's let's do that. Let's get in Grunt and Stink. Uh, we want them as faces. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Can we uh, can we go a bit lower? Uh, I guess 500. All right, he wants 520. Yep, that's perfect. All right, so we got Grunt. We'll get Stink in as well, just for a one-night deal. Uh, we'll do 520 for him as well. Hopefully, we won't have to, to worry about it too much. All right, so both those guys can come in. I mean, getting Dread in would be pretty interesting. Just to, to maybe... I mean, he would be a pretty good stable member or a manager, I guess, or the the behemoths themselves. Either way, let's uh let's book that sort of. I don't want, I don't want to say it's like a jobber tag team match, but it is going to be the behemoths taking on Grunt and Stink. Uh, we'll give it we'll give it ten, I guess. Uh, I'm not sure if I want to keep it open. I don't think I will. I think I might actually have Killer Shark dominate. And we'll make it decisive. Yeah, I like that. I also changed the uh, TV show announcer. I didn't realize, but Jason Azaria wasn't on Total Wrestling. So, yeah, Sean, I think Sean Dokes is his name. Um, who is essentially being brought up as the replacement. Okay, we... What the hell happened there? We can't call the match, so let's script it. Oh, okay, they don't have stamina. Okay, well, with that said, can they go eight minutes? Please tell me they can go eight. Really? They can't even go eight minutes. Uh, let's go five minutes, I guess. That was kind of a pointless, you know, local signing to make. Uh, so we'll get the, the Nations of Filth, because they might actually get a little bonus by being put as a unit. Uh, so it is Stink and Grunt. I'm not sure if it would actually make any type of difference, but... 
just the fact that they'll be an actual tag team might potentially help the, the match rating out a little bit more. Probably not, but yeah, it's fine. Uh, I want to do another tag team match, and we're going to try and get Divine Fortune over. Uh, because they are going to be the next competitors. So I think they can verse the Elite one more time. Because uh, I think the Elite... Did they beat them? I think they versed them the first time. Uh, let's, let's go match, yeah. So they versed them the first time, and the Elite defeated Divine Fortune. Divine Fortune then had the victory at the pay-per-view in that first episode or first stream. So this will be the penultimate match to determine the number one contenders. And we'll give it to Divine Fortune. Like I said, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with them. They're a fairly established tag team. They used to, like, on 2016, they were probably much lower down the card than where they are now, to an extent. And that's only because TCW really doesn't have any proper tag teams left with the, the new wave being disbanded. Alright, what else do I want to do? Let's have a match for J Cord. Uh, and I think we'll let's have him take on Island Boy Apollo. No real reason. Um I just think it'll be a pretty good match, so I'm pretty happy to kind of see what happens with this one. Uh, I might also like to... I mean, what is Sammy back? Let me... Let me put Jasmine back on here for a second. So we'll book that. Then I want to check Sammy. And see if he has... Okay, he's got zero color commentary. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to affect the, the rating itself, but let's just put Sammy back on color commentary and see what happens, I guess. Yeah, I'm not too sure. Yeah, either way, I mean, that'll be a pretty good match, I think. All right, up next, another singles match. This time... Let's go for... Actually, let's go a tag match. And we're going to... Yeah, we're going to go with T-Bone Bright. And he's going to be partnered up by One Man Army. I think I want to just change his name back to Guide. And that can maybe be the catalyst. And they're going to take on Maverick and Finley O'Faraday. We've sort of got a little bit of a... I don't want to say a tag team, but a little bit of a... It's not even a friendship. It's more of just these two guys are on the same page at the moment. Uh, but yeah, Finley is going to get the victory and T-Bone's going to lose. However, it is going to be a tainted victory due to interference. From our boy, Joshua Taylor. So that one's, that one's going to continue. And we want outside interference finish. Not that. We want T-Bone and Joshua Taylor. All right, perfect. Um, I'm not sure if I can get rid of that one. Should I get that? Let's get rid of it, and I want to see what happens. Uh, let's also not call this match because of T-Bone. Still needs quite a bit of work on his psychology. Alright, that's looking pretty good. Let's let's do some angles before we add any more matches. So I guess we'll just go with a menace angle for the behemoths. Killer Shark Titan. Both on menace. And that can advance their storyline. Well, that's actually the same storyline that's being advanced twice, but this one's going to be advanced as well. Uh, they're all kind of going to be advanced in some way or another. Uh, so that's going to go there. Let's go with a Divine Fortune angle. 
Uh, so let's go Daryl and Chance. I guess they can actually cut it onto Eddie Chandler. And who's his partner? Nate. Almost forgot for a second there. Almost. Script both those guys. Uh, the other two don't need to be rated. Uh, and basically, th the angle that they're going to cut is the fact that, you know, they, they beat them at the pay-per-view when it really counted. You know, when the money was on the line. Pay-per-view bonus and all that type of stuff. Yeah, so that's not too bad. Let's also go for J Core. Actually, let's go Sammy back. And he can cut his angle onto J Cord. Yeah, I think that, that'll work. And we'll give some success there to Sammy. And we'll advance Cord versus back. Yeah, I like that. Uh, and then obviously, you know, he's going to come out to, uh, to do commentary. It kind of works anyway. Uh, then up next, I guess I want to... Hmm. Let's have a... Yeah, let's have... I want to try and have Finn Leo Faraday and Maverick. Now, I'm not sure what Maverick should be rated on. Uh, but they're going to attack One Man Army with T-Bone Bright making the save. So let me have a quick look at Maverick for a second. Uh, I guess he's entertainment. I guess. I don't know. Uh, maybe I'll go fighting for him. And then maybe selling for One Man Army. Yeah, I mean, that kind of works. And we have uh, T-Bone Bright making the save. Yeah, it works. That works. And that, I think that's how we'll start the show off as well. Because we're pretty much at our allotted time. A little bit angry that I can't get a Greg Gage angle in there. I mean, I might be able to do it if we take two minutes off something. Let's take two minutes off this match. It doesn't need to be 20. It's kind of just me being a bit silly. Uh, and then we'll have Greg cutting his angle onto Benny Benson, who he defeated at the pay-per-view at Malice in Wonderland. And that can also advance their storyline as well. Uh, where is it? The Rise and Rise. All right. That's pretty good. Now we do need a storytelling match, which can be this one here. And then we also need to put that ankle in the right place as well. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, what am I doing? Uh, what did I bring that up for? So that goes down, that goes down. I don't know what I'm doing. Anyway, there we go. What is our problem? We have... Okay, we're overusing a lot of people at the moment. And we don't have a wild brawl either. Well, we do now. This match is going to be a wild brawl. Okay. And then we need to... I think we're going to reduce this a little bit more. Let's go down to 16. Still probably overused. Oh no. Only Finley. Only Finley is being overused, but that's that's fine. And let me sort this out as well. Yeah, I have absolutely no idea. I mean hopefully it's working for other people. But on my phone, the uh, the stream doesn't seem to be working. So, hoping that's not an actual issue. Let me just double check one more time. I mean, it still says I'm live. All 
All right, there we go. I'm essentially watching the stream right now. Essentially watching the stream right now. Yeah, there we go. Oh, it's working. It's working. So I'm happy about that. Oh, hey man, how you going? Probe. Is that how you say it? Probe. Thanks for the uh, the follow earlier as well. I noticed that you are uh, you followed the stream. Just about to uh, to run our first TV show since the last stream. Might also add a cheeky little pre-show match in here as well. Uh, let's go with Joshua Taylor and another heel. Let's go with Mark Speed. Actually, let's go Troy Tornado. And they can take on uh, Dean Daniels and. Uh, I guess Elliot Thomas, yeah. And we'll just give Taylor the victory there. All right. That looks pretty good. Why is Dean being the road agent? Anyway. Let's, uh, let's run the show. Starting off with a 59. Pretty surprising. But we do have Joshua Taylor and Troy Tornado defeating Dean Daniels on the pre-show. Or Dean Daniels and Elliot Thomas. And uh, we've got some negative chemistry there as well. A little bit frustrating. But, uh, I mean, it's probably they're probably never going to be a team anyway, so it doesn't matter. Alright, so we start the show off with... Uh, yeah... Should have probably given him a script. Either way, 51's not too bad for our opening show angle. And of course, we've got... Well, we've essentially got Maverick beating down a one-man army. You know, just he, he did lose to him at the pay-per-view. And obviously, Finley's in the background pretty much orchestrating things. And then, of course, T-Brain Bright coming out to make the save. Setting up a tag team match. Which gets a 60... And we do have Maverick and Finley O'Faraday defeating T-Bone Bright and One Man Army in 12-16. And yeah, Finley O'Faraday pinned T-Bone Bright with an Atomic Spine Buster following interference from Joshua Taylor. So yeah, once again, T-Bone and the Joshua Taylor storyline advancing there, as well as uh, this weird trio storyline that we got going on as well at the moment. Okay, we're then going to an 80 rated angle for Sammy Back, putting his angle onto J Cord, who I th did he beat? I think J Cord beat him. So Sammy wants a bit of revenge. And he, he comes out and says he's going to be on commentary for J Cord's next match. I think an 80 is pretty good though. Sammy off script as well. And that's a pretty good match as well. 73 there for J Cord. Defeating Island Boy Apollo. 79 in ring. I'm pretty happy with that. That's not too bad. There you go on Jaron Jero Nullet. Jero Nullet. I have not unchecked the high risk moves. I think I'm just gonna wait because it doesn't seem like it's a big issue at the moment, so um, I'm pretty I'm pretty fine with it. But like I said, I you know I I will change it if it does become an issue. Anyway, we go into a 59 here for Divine Fortune's angle, and of course they're they're kind of I don't want to say they're bragging, but they're just they're just alluding to the fact that they you know it is one all between these two teams, but. Divine Fortune did get the victory at the pay-per-view at Malice in Wonderland. And of course, the winner of this next match becoming the number one contenders for the tag titles. Not that you really would want to become the number one contenders at the moment. Hmm, interesting. It gets a 56. I've oh, got this negative chemistry again for the announcers. Kyle Rhodes and Jason Azaria. 
Anyway, we do have Divine Fortune defeating the Elite and becoming number one contenders. So let's get that one booked in for the war to settle the score, which is our next pay-per-view. And it's going to be Divine Fortune taking on the Behemoths. And yeah, it's going to be an interesting match. I would like to do 16 minutes, but we might not be able to do it. We'll just have to wait and see. Either way, it's going to be open, slow built, and decisive. Alright, hopefully they'll have the stamina for it. Either way, I mean, it's, a, it's not a great match. It's just, it is what it is. Anyway. Moving on to a 74 rated menace angle from the behemoth. So that's uh, that's much improved, I think. That's up from a, a 60 something. So they're, they're definitely getting over. Hopefully this squash match as well will be pretty beneficial. It's a bad match as you would kind of expect, but I'm thinking it might've done what it needed to do. And we have the Behemoths defeating the Nation of Filth, who are on a one-night appearance deal for that tag team. I mean, they didn't do too badly. They both got a 30 and a 31, respectively, for a five-minute match where we have uh, Killer Shark pinning Stink with a big bite. Uh, and as you can see, they got a tag team specialist bonus, which is why I wanted to add them as a team together. Oh, it really helped your match ratings. Okay, well, hmm, maybe I will turn it off. Yeah, I'll think. I'll think about turning it off after this uh, show. Anyway, thirty-seven for a squash match. Killer Shark dominating. We then go into a sixty-six for Greg Gage, and of course, he's essentially rubbing his victory in the face of Benny Benson. Yeah, just. Greg Gage being a being a bit of a dick, as you'd expect. It, it's just in his nature, really. And, uh, of course, we have his next title defense as well, getting a 73. We have Greg Gage defeating Bart Biggins by submission with a proton lock, and he makes defense number 12 of his television title. It's a pretty good match for a 16-minute for a title match. Yeah, Greg's, he's definitely starting to get over. We looked at his popularity at the end of the last stream. And I think he was up like 10 points, wasn't he? So he'll be a main eventer soon, hopefully. We we kind of need him to be. Yeah, okay. I mean, that's, that's annoying. We get a 69 here for the pre-main event angle. And yeah, both guys were pretty bad without a script. And Mighty Mo is essentially the reason why we weren't able to use a script. Yeah. I don't know. That's that's kind of annoying. Because Andrews would have would have been scripted and it would have been a lot better, probably. Anyway. And finally, the main event doesn't do too well. And once again, it's because of Azaria and Kyle Rhodes clashing at the announce table. So we're definitely gonna have to do something. About that, I guess we'll have to move Sean Dokes back on, even though he's worse than Azaria. Anyway, we've got Aaron Andrews and Mighty Meaty defeating the Syndicate uh, when Mighty Mo pinned Doc Hammond with a plunging spinebuster to finish the show. But, uh, I don't think it's going to be a very good one. Yeah, only get a seventy overall. Two-person commentary. Yeah. Actually, we could take Kyle Rhodes off, seeing as my character, I, I essentially am Kyle Rhodes in this scenario. And we could just go with uh, Jasmine and Jason as area. That's a good idea. Really good idea. Um, but yeah, the, uh, on paper, I thought this was going to be a pretty good show, but a 70... Not great. Not great. Yeah, losses popularity in 11 regions, increasing popularity in 7, uh, which I assume is probably just Canada. Uh, and that's, what, 4 points below our popularity? So I'm thinking that's probably going to be a pretty bad 
popularity loss. Let's have a look. Oh, really? Ace are unhappy. What is our minimum requirement? I should probably check that out. Uh, but we did get a 2.63 TV rating. Just under 2 million viewers. Uh, but that's, of course, with the aid of our new Canada deal. Canada broadcast deal. Uh, so let's jump into the office and let's have a look at broadcasting for a sec. Uh, so Ace. 71 minimum quality. One point away. Anyway, I don't, I don't, I don't understand why they would be that upset. We were literally one point away. I know it's a game, but give me a break. Am I right? Anyway, let's uh, let's sort out the announcers first. So that was a really good idea to to just go with two. So I think what we'll do, we'll take Kyle off here. And then we'll chuck just Jasmine into the booth. We might actually look for another color, color commentator. Uh, so that's for events. And then we'll do the same for TV as well. It's just kind of unnecessary. And we might actually make Carl Rhodes a... Maybe like a, a backstage interviewer or something like that. Uh, so his color... I mean, I guess we could just make him a personality, perhaps. Uh, On-screen personality. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it works. There we go, personality. He's got a lot of popularity, so I think he'd be fine doing interviews and stuff like that. Similar to maybe Tony Schiavone from AEW, where he would just, you know... Just do some sit-down interviews with whoever's sort of important for that week, perhaps. Uh, I mean, what gimmick do we actually want to give him? Let's have a look at his skills. Uh, it looks like he cannot play anything. I mean, what's left after those? Um, let's, uh, we'll get some inspiration. Uh, so let me just reset that. We'll go, I'm not sure if he's actually a face or a heel anyway, so. Um, I guess a, a standard gimmick. Yeah. Not really too sure what we'd do. Yeah, he could go authority figure. Uh, I don't really want to use an authority figure, though. I'm not a fan of authority figures. Let's make him a staff member. There we go. Uh, we might actually just go more generic and more safe. Yeah, so there we go. All right. I guess I'll, uh, let's have a look at the product. So high risk moves. I'll turn, I'll turn it off. I'll turn it off. If you, if you think it gives better match ratings, then we, uh, we may as well do it. So there we go. Hopefully we'll see a, a bit of an increase. That'd be pretty good. Uh, anything else? All right, yeah, we're gonna look for a color commentator, weren't we? So let me just reset that. Let's go color commentator. Preferably, I mean, it doesn't, they don't necessarily have to work there. Let's also actually do a search. Uh, let's go like a minimum of like 75. All right. All right, Adrian Garcia, 80. Alex Braun, 77. I mean, Belle Bryden would be pretty good. 82. She'd be great. I'd actually like her to replace maybe uh, Jasmine. 
Emily McQueen, 78. I mean, we could maybe make like a a women's TV show. That could be kind of cool. Emma Chase, 92. And she's got incredible entertainment stats. Holy crap. Okay. I, um, I wasn't expecting that. MC Motormouth. These stats have really increased as well. Oh, okay. The Guru. Yeah, not as good. I think it's uh, Emma Chase. Yeah. Oh, we can't. Ah. Oh. I didn't. I didn't look at the contract situation. Ah. Oh. Okay, I feel like an idiot for doing that, to be honest. Essentially getting my hopes up. Um, yeah. There we go. I guess, uh, I guess we'll go with, uh, Alex Braun. Was Alex? Oh, no. Ernie. Ernie better? Slightly better. Where's he working? New York City. Pittsburgh Steel. Uh, who's going to be cheaper? That's kind of another thing I should probably ask myself. Um, Ernie's going to be cheaper. A lot cheaper. He's got no popularity though, so that's probably going to be a bit of a, a bit of a situation, but... Yeah, no, it, sh it should be fine. It should be fine. Man, I have no idea what is going on with my, uh, my stream on mobile. It, uh, just doesn't seem to be working, so. There we go. Anyway, moving on. Let's, uh, let's get Ernie... I guess. I mean, do I want to get someone else? Let's drop it down to 70, and I want to see who else is available. I mean, Carville's pretty good. I mean, Farrah's at a 74. always go Max Smith, the Australian. I'm a big fan of Max Smith, to be honest. Yeah, I kind of want to get Max Smith in. That's a, that's a big contract. Uh, I think we might just go a handshake deal. Yeah, let's just go a handshake deal uh, for five years, I guess. And we'll try 400 per show. Oh. Doesn't have to be ironclad. All right, so there we go. 400 for five years. Yeah. I mean, I like him, so we, we may as well just get him in, to be honest. Okay, so I guess we'll have to wait for him to sign properly. And in the meantime, if he's not, uh, well, if he doesn't come in for this next show, then we can just, we can just run with a two-person booth. Just with our Azaria and Jasmine Saunders. I'm pretty curious to see if the spinal impact moves are actually going to change anything. Alright, so there he is, Max Smith coming in. 
Of course, he's going to be a face. He is a cheeky little Australian. All right, and then we've got all of our workers coming in on their proper contracts now. All the guys that we signed recently. Their, you know, their deals have all finished. We could actually bring in Mobstar and Gravedigger. Dead Man Walking. That'd be another really good tag team. I'm a big fan of Mobstar. And he does look like he's improved even more. More so than he was in 2016. Yeah, I think, uh, I think those two might come in at some stage. You know, not yet. I've already signed quite a few people. We want to try and make some money, if I'm being honest. Okay. We've got a, we've got a few ex excursion people possibly coming in. Okay, I like it. We've got Matt Blackburn. He's an, uh, a 19-year-old American. Really good stamina. Good charisma, good star quality as well. He's not too bad, so he'll make a, a pretty good jobber. As I'm sure all of them will. Uh... Let me, let me have a look at all of them first. I don't want to, I don't know, I don't want to waste too much money. I guess if they're coming on excursion, I can probably just do the, the lower fee, doing the per show fee. But then of course they will, uh, once their popularity goes up, they'll probably want higher rates per appearance. I mean, he's... Fairly similar to the other guys. Got a, a lot better psychology. Probably not not as good in the ring. And this guy, Nobuyo Hikichi. Who's got better basics. He's actually pretty good in the ring. Uh, but he's got lower star quality and lower charisma there as well. I think we'll get all three of them. Yeah, we'll get all three of them, but we'll go with our handshake deals, so. He's only going to be 40 per show, which is nothing, so pretty happy about that. Uh, and I guess they can, yeah, they can come in as a heel trio, maybe. Maybe a little stable amongst themselves. And maybe just call them Pride, Glory, Honor. Not obviously call them their names. We'll call them their names, but the, the stable itself. Can be pride, glory, honor. I guess if we get any more excursion wrestlers, they could uh, they could essentially just join the same stable, and we could just keep it around for however long. Make him a heel as well. Probably not a very good heel, but I don't think it really matters too much. Um, yeah, all right. I mean, they're all super cheap. And it's just going to be cheap, you know, jobbers for us. So I'm pretty happy about it. Just a, a couple of extra faces. Of course, the, uh, the, the partnership there with Pride Glory is, uh, is a new thing for 2020. Where they can actually take their, their workers... On, uh, on excursion. I mean, Casey Glenn. Now, that would be a guy I want to bring in to TCW. Man, he's he's so good. Still pretty young as well. That's the, uh, the crazy thing. That's not, a, that's not a great tour show there from Burning Hammer. And that's an even worse tour show there from Pride Glory, so... Oh, nice. Jason Nazaria's contract is ending. Okay. Well, maybe we should look for announcers as well. I don't really like Sean Dokes. I think that's his name. So let's have a look in here as well. Let's go reset. Let's go announcer. USA. I mean, we can... Let's, let's do anywhere because I guess we want to try and get the best announcer possible for us. 
And let's grab, let's go a minimum of 80. Mitch Nace is the only one. However, he is the owner of PSW. So, it's going to be a bit of a problem. We could sign him on a on a normal contract, on a per show contract, like a handshake deal, but I'm not sure how beneficial that would actually be. Uh, I kind of want to do it. Let's let's see if there's anyone else available. Just a bit lower. Let's go 75s. Um, we've got this guy here who is Japanese, so he probably doesn't speak any English. Yeah, so that's probably not going to happen. you got Lee Bambino. He's only 34, so he's relatively young. And then we've got Marvin Ernest as well, who's a bit lower. I kind of like Lee Bambino. He is actually better than Azaria by one point, so... Let's, let's get him in. On a written deal, I think. I would like to get it higher than three years, possibly, but... I'm assuming that that's not going to be possible. Okay, he only wants 15000 for a five-year contract. So I think, yeah, we'll do it. Oh, hold on. Exclusive written. Always got to make sure it's exclusive. Otherwise, you know, you could run into some... Wait, what? Oh. Yeah, I mean, that'd be a pretty good idea. Sean Dokes managing the Pride Glory excursionists. All right, so there we go. Lee Bambino is going to come in and Azaria is going to go out at the end of the month when his contract does run out. All right, let's uh, assign some gimmicks here as well for these two new guys. So he plays badass and legitimate well. Let's go badass. Um, I guess we'll go some... Ins I, I like using the inspiration ones, to be honest. So we'll go badass, heal... I guess, yeah, just badass. It's going to work pretty well. Um, so that's fine for him. And then who's the other guy? It is... Goya. Daigo Goya. And I guess he'll go with realistic. Yeah. Just a realistic gimmick. Let's just go old school realist. There we go. Let's give him a little bit of creativity as well. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be pretty unique as well. So give him a little bit of room to, to blossom that gimmick, perhaps. And uh, yeah, Blackburn's going with a vicious heel gimmick. So that's fine. Uh, anything else I need to do? I don't think so. Let's, uh, let's add that cheeky stable in as well. Uh, so we'll just call it Pride, Glory, Honor. I think that's how you spell Honor in America, isn't it? Either way, I'll change it. And it is going to be a... A faction or an alliance? 
I feel like it would probably be more of an alliance than a faction. Let's go alliance. Uh, and then I've got to try and remember their names. Uh, so who's the first guy? Let me go from the start. Um, let's go with the American first. So his name was... I literally I just said his name. There he is, Mac Blackburn. And then we've got Daigo Goya. And I'm wondering if this guy, he, he's probably on excursion as well. Yuri Yoshihara. Uh, but let's go Nobuyu Hikichi in there as well. Um, I guess they'll all just be members. We won't actually have a leader yet. We'll, we'll bring in a leader at some stage down the line. There we go. Pride, glory, honor. Let me actually go back and check. That's how you spell it properly. Yeah, that's how they spell it. Okay. Obviously, in, uh, in some other countries, you spell honor a little bit differently. Either way, doesn't matter too much. Let's advance into the next TV show. We'll have those guys maybe run on the on the pre-show. Oh, nice. Dazzling Dave Diamond, improving the locker room morale. And then, of course, we've got Eddie Peake, as per usual, not showing up on a non-pay-per-view show. I really wish I could use him more. He wasn't that impressive at the pay-per-view, but... I feel like we could do some good things. And we're expecting 8,400. Uh, I think because the wrestling industry went up to a yellow there. So that's pretty nice. I'm happy about that. If we can be selling out this 10,000 seater, I think that'd be pretty beneficial. Let me do something really quick here as well. And we'll get booking. All right. Let's uh let's start booking. So Hmm, I'm kind of wondering I'm trying to bring the stream up right now but it's not coming up. Oh, there we go. It came up. Just took a little little while to load. Interesting. All right. It's working. For some reason I just get a, a little bit paranoid when I think it, it might not be working. All right. So what are we going to do? I'm thinking... What am I thinking? I don't know. I feel like a... I want to go for a pretty big main event. And what I mean by that is... I want to have, let's go J-Cord, yeah, let's, let's do this, so I want to have J-Cord, I want to have a tag team match, first of all, and we're going to have J-Cord teaming up with Greg Gage, of course, both are second generation stars, and they're going to take on the team of Sammy Back. And Benny Benson. Now, I'm a little bit worried that it might not ha have enough star power in it. But I think we should be okay. I think. So, we'll give it 22 minutes. Uh, 20 minutes, sorry. Uh, as far as who wins. Let's, ha let's have Sammy win. So, Sammy can pin Greg. I think. We'll slow his push down a little bit, but then again, we're also, you know, we're raising him up a little bit, so, you know, he's kind of in the upper mid card. He's, he's putting on the main event show, the main event match, despite taking, taking the loss. Yeah, I mean, I think that, that should be pretty good. Uh, now, as far as angles, I want to have an angle after 
And we're going to have Wolf Hawkins, Aaron Andrews. Uh, I guess they can just fight, to be honest. The, a fighting angle. Actually, let's have... Let's do it the other way around. So Wolf Hawkins is going to be... Going to be talking. And then we're going to have Aaron Andrews, who's going to be fighting off uh, Doc... Doc Hammond, and I guess both members of the Elite, so Eddie Chandler and Nate. And uh, he's going to be essentially beating beating all three of their asses, so... Yeah, there we go. And that should be pretty good. That's going to be the, uh, the post-main event angle. Uh, I guess before the main event, let's go with Jay Court and Greg Gage together. Sort of uh, aligning themselves together. Not not essentially as a, a proper team yet, but they're... Yeah, but they're, they're just, you know, doing their own thing, but... You know, for this match at least, they're, they're going to be on the same page. And aligning themselves up pretty well. Uh, so up next, I think we want to go with... Let's go with Chance Fortune and he can take on Killer Shark. And again, that one's going to kind of build towards the title match between the two teams. Uh, other matches, let's use one of our new tag teams that we brought in. So let's have, let's have the Cobras and they can take on, uh, who can they take on? I guess they can take on the Elite to give the Elite a little bit of momentum, seeing as they took a loss. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll book that match for 10 minutes. Don't really like having the uh, the Cobras lose, but I mean it's still pretty early on, so I think it's fine for them to lose in that scenario. Let's go with a, a Killer Shark menace angle by himself, just to just to test where he's at on his own. Uh, what else do we want to do? Let's have let's have a match for Doc. And we'll have Doc Hammond taking on Mighty Mo uh, in what is essentially a rematch, kind of, of their... Well, they were in the main event last week, of course. And I want to give Mighty Mo the victory there as well. Uh, so that's, that's a pretty good match. And again, it's going to just help out Mighty Mo just that little bit more. We'll also give him a... Uns unscripted, I guess. Probably one not unscripted. A nice little angle for himself there. Alright, nice. Sabotaged. Thank you for the follow, dude. Appreciate it. Uh, I'm not sure if I want to do an elite angle. I mean, how good are they on the mic? They're actually pretty good. Well, at least Eddie Chandler is. They're both pretty good. I mean, Nate Johnson is a bit of a beast, despite being 43 years old. Yeah, he's a, he's a bit of a beast. If they had more popularity, they'd probably be, you know, one of our top tag teams. Yeah, sabotaged. I, I, I'm personally the opposite. I, I love the C-verse. Um, and I've, I've actually never played or done a real world series on YouTube or a, or a live stream myself. I am going to be doing one soon, but it's going to be a, a like a, a historical mod, I guess you would call it. Uh, but yeah, c -verse is definitely my, it's my shit, really. I love it. Just, uh, it feels so, I don't know, it feels so different and just, there's just so much more going on. Compared to a, a real world 
database, I guess. Anyway, uh, let's continue booking. So yeah, elite angle. So Eddie and Nate. We'll get them booked in. Hopefully we can actually advance the storyline without anyone else being in it. Hmm. Hopefully that'll work. And we'll chuck that there as well. Uh, what else do we want to do? Who else have I got left, actually? Uh, maybe let's have... I haven't really used Matt Hawking much, and I, I was a bit of a fan of him back on 2016. Uh, but he's he's a heel. I, I pr much prefer him as a, a face. Let's, let's have him take on uh, Danny Fonzarelli. Although I probably want Fonzarelli to, to win. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. All right, there we go. I think we'll we'll give the victory to Matt Hawking, but we'll we'll just make it tainted. It's more just a, a match for for both these guys to do something. You haven't done real world since two thousand five. That's a long time. I did have a personal. Uh, what am I doing there? Why am I moving that angle for? Uh, that is, that's the main event angle, isn't it? Why was I moving that? Anyway. T-Bone Bright. Yeah, he's currently in the Joshua Taylor storyline. So we might get a, a bit of revenge. So. Yeah, that'd be a pretty cool save. RIPW. I guess it would be sort of similar to NXT for a real world comparison. Uh, so yeah, T-Bone, Joshua Taylor. Let's have... Hmm. I guess we'll just have Taylor versus maybe Elliot Thomas. Have I done this match? Not really, it was on the pre-show. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll do this one. And I think we'll... We'll give the victory to Josh Taylor, but we'll have a we'll have T-Bone Bright come down to ringside or something like that. So we'll make it decisive. And then at ringside, we'll have uh, T-Bone. Yeah, I mean that'll be that'll be okay. We might, I might actually have them in an angle fighting together. Uh, post-match. So let's do that. So Joshua Taylor and T-Bone Bright and they can just be fighting together for four minutes. There we go. 116 minutes. What? Three new managers. That's, yeah, that seems a bit ridiculous. I'm, uh, I'm not sure if, you know, I mean, it is at, at the same time, it is the SWF, so really couldn't put anything past them. Just doing completely random stuff like that. All right, so we need a storytelling match. Let's make this one a wild brawl. Where am I at? Wild brawl up here. Okay, we'll lower that. Danny doesn't have the, the stamina. She's 44 years old. Wow. I suppose we are... We are essentially four years in the future. I've got to... Got to keep remembering that. Uh, so storytelling. Let's just go with Joshua Taylor. Elliot Thomas. All right, we do need some more time. I might make this match 16 minutes and we'll go slow build on it. I feel like it could be a pretty good match with our Doc Hammond. 
mean, he's still got the stamina for it. Alright, uh, I think we need one more angle as well. I mean, what storylines haven't I advanced yet? I mean, essentially that one, but... Hmm. Might just do another angle for Aaron Andrews, possibly. Yeah. Let's, let's actually just do another angle for Andrews and Wolf, just together. They can both be in an angle, just to, to kick off the show. And that'll advance their storyline again as well. I mean, that that's sort of guaranteed to be a pretty good angle, regardless. And let's do a pre-show six-man tag as well. Ooh. I think I'll, I'll do that next. And we'll use... We'll actually use... What's his name? Kyle Rhodes for the interview segment. I think on the next show, I'll get him to interview Wolf. I think that'd be pretty cool. All right, so let's get the uh, the new guys in. So we got, where is he? Blackburn, Goya, and Ikichi. And they can take on, let's go with uh, Tanner and the Puerto Rican boys. Yeah, for 12 minutes, why not? And I guess we'll give Tanner the victory in there. And I think we'll definitely have to script this one, so that's fine. Alright. Yeah, I mean, that looks pretty good. I think I'm happy with that. Alright, let's start the show. Starting off with a 42. Uh, Blackburn. So the one gimmick that I didn't actually do myself gets a poor rating. But the other two get great and very good. I don't know. It is what it is. Anyway, 42 for the uh, the debuting Pride Glory Honor. The first ever, well, on our series anyway, the first three excursionists coming in from Pride Glory. And yeah, they get defeated by Tana, the Mighty, and the Puerto Rican boys as well. And uh, one of them actually picked up an injury already with a stinger. Okay. And it was actually the uh, the best performer in the match as well, Hikichi. He got a 28. Alright, moving on. We start the show off with an 88 rated angle between Aaron Andrews and Wolf Hawkins. Probably just a, a bit of a war of words between the two. Of course, we... Oh, I forgot to... Damn it. I didn't book in the right... Oh, I must have done a generic venue. That's frustrating. Anyway, because that's, that's a lot lower. We were expected, what, 8,400, I think it was? Ugh. So much lower. All right, moving on to a 67, where we have Joshua Taylor defeating Elliot Thomas with uh, T-Bone at ringside. Doesn't do anything during the match. But then, of course, after the match is finished, we get a 68 rated angle for Joshua Taylor and T-Bone Bright fighting it out together. It's actually a pretty good angle, considering uh, it's T-Bone. And he is not exactly up to scratch yet. Hmm, It's quite impressive, I think. We then go into a, a bit of a random match. Get a 65 for it, though, which is a lot better than what I expected. Might actually make a storyline out of this match as well. Considering they have uh, pretty good chemistry together. We've got Matt Hawking defeating Danny Fonzarelli by pinfall while using the ropes for leverage. Cheating to win. Yeah, I think we'll make a storyline between these two. Give them something to do. We then go into a 78 rated angle with Mighty Mo, of course, off script. And this time, you know, he improvised well, so happy about that. 
And his match gets a 75, so it's it's actually d- did better than the main event last on last week's show. And we have Mighty Mo defeating Doc Hammond by pinfall with a plunging spine buster. 71 in ring performance. We then go into a 63 for the elite, being Eddie Chandler and Nate Johnson. And of course, they're taking on the American Cobras up next. It's not a bad match. 65 for the Elite defeating the American Cobras in 10-25 when Nate pinned Marvel. It's a good match. That's a really good match. I'm definitely happy with that. All right, moving on to... uh, an 82 from Killer Shark. That's uh, that's pretty impressive. That is that is seriously impressive. 82, 82 by himself. I think we're just gonna have to start spamming menace angles for. Well, you probably know I want to push Killer Shark, so we'll we'll try and do that, but. Yeah, Danny fighting to prove he still has it. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a pretty good storyline basis as well. And of course, Matt Hocking essentially having to cheat to win to get one over on the veteran. Yeah, that actually sounds like a good storyline. Anyway, Killer Shark's match gets a 63 where he defeats Chance Fortune by pinfall with a big bite. 60 in ring performance. It's not too shabby. He is essentially my project at the moment, Killer Shark, along with Mighty Mo. Uh, Greg Gage, I wouldn't call it project because he's, his natural progression is just going to be to the main event anyway. But yeah, 63, not too bad. Uh, we then go into a 73 rated angle between J Cord and Greg Gage. Of course, these two second generation stars getting on the same page for their main event match tonight. And it does pretty well. 76. You know, I can't really complain about that. Jay Cord with an 88 in-ring performance. Now that is crazy. Yeah, I didn't, didn't really expect that. Anyway, give me one second. I'll be back in one second, guys. All right, so I'm back. And we've got Sammy back defeating, or Sammy, Sammy back and Benny Benson defeating Jay Cord and Greg Gage. Yeah, with a back on your back. All right, so we then go to the uh, the post main event angle, and of course it's uh, revolving around Hawkins and Andrews, and then the uh, the rest of the syndicate coming out there. And uh, yeah, basically Andrews essentially fights all three of them off, and um, yeah, manages to I don't know get his. Um, 
comeuppance, I guess, against Wolf Hawkins. As he tries to essentially, you know, bring Aaron Andrews back down to a to a bad level. Or at least, try, you know, try and injure him for some serious pain. Alright, that's not too bad. Overall share rating getting us a 78. Increasing our popularity in 8 regions, which I think is probably Canada. And then maybe Hawaii. Possibly. Or Puerto Rico. Sorry. I think Puerto Rico or Hawaii was the lowest. I'm not sure which one. Anyway, let's have a look at... So, ooh, we got some more things here. Floyd Goldworthy. Uh, who's he actually managing these days? Or what's, what's he actually doing these days? I'm not too sure, because American Buffalo is no longer around. Uh, managing the Sinner's Society stable. Has he been managing Killer Shark and and Titan? I don't I don't know if he has, anyway. Got Aaron Andrews thinking Elliot Thomas is turning into a good worker. And the kid's worth getting behind. And we've got a 2.92 TV rating. Just under 2.2 million viewers. That's pretty good. Yeah, better shark match than I thought. Yeah, I mean, he's he's doing pretty well, Killer Shark. Yeah, definitely. His attitude, I mean, that's a problem, but at the same time, I mean, he's going to he's like you said, he's going to be a superstar, so pretty much got to do what you got to do to to you know, to to make a superstar, even if they do have a a negative attitude. That's a really good storyline prospect for reforming the new wave. So we'll have the Elite start saying they're the best uh, TCW tag team of all time. And it rubs Doc the wrong way. Yeah, I mean, that's that sounds pretty good. And it could be the implosion we use for the, uh, for the Syndicate. Alright, yeah, I mean, that's pretty good. The real question is, do I need Floyd Goldworthy? He is pretty over. He is pretty over. Okay, so he actually is managing Killer Shark, Eddie Peak, Titan, and Nick Booth. Mm, okay. Okay, I mean that's interesting. Yeah. Either way, let's uh let's advance into the next show. I didn't, I honestly didn't realize that he was the manager for the behemoths. I guess I just didn't notice it when it was. Yeah, when it was coming up. Got the lovely Gina Montero there. All right, so here's Lee Bambino. Could, uh, could go for Charger Siaki. Wouldn't be a bad little prospect to get in. Hmm, interesting. Hmm, kind of got a bit of a negative personality as well. He's not great, but he's also not too bad either. I think I think we'll take a miss on him though.
Yeah, I think we'll take a miss on him. What I should do actually is go to the uh, the big companies and actually add add their uh, their whole sh rosters to my shortlist to see who who leaves. Oh, can I? Oh yeah, there we go. Shortlist all. Let's do SWF. Let's do let's do CWA as well, and let's do US Pro. So shortlist all them. We might be able to steal a few US Pro women as well to start our women's division instead of just like raiding uh, QAW. Uh, let's do yeah, we'll do Rhode Island as well just to see if any nice sort of younger talents come available that we can poach away and then the canadian wrestling alliance as well i mean maybe raw i mean yeah let's do raw as well considering we can convince people to come over i might be able to convince a, a few aussies to come over maybe start like an aussie stable that 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 would be pretty cool for me personally do I watch any wrestling on TV these days? Uh, the only thing I've been watching recently is AEW. Obviously, there's not a lot else, really. I would probably be watching maybe the New Japan pay-per-views. But I, I really don't watch much New Japan anymore, unfortunately. Whereas I used to be a, a massive fan of New Japan. I still watch the, the pay-per-views. And, you know, if a, if a match is really good on a tour show, then I'd watch the... I'd probably watch the tour show as well. But yeah, that's that's essentially it. Just AEW at the moment. Can't really stand WWE. No, I haven't been watching NWA. I mean I watched I watched a little bit of power the the first couple of episodes, but Yeah, I just that was obviously quite a quite some time ago. When um when there was a lot of wrestling on TV and a lot of wrestling available, I should probably uh try and catch up considering there's not a lot else available. Ooh, Des Davids. Des Davids would be a pretty interesting pickup. He'd be a very interesting pickup. He's only thirty five as well, so he's kind of in his prime. And he's got a lot of popularity. Ooh, he's going to be expensive, though. Ooh, he's going to be very expensive. 56,000. Four-year contract they're going for. So if I don't get him now, I'm going to have to wait four years. So I'll probably never get him again. Because by then I probably wouldn't even want to sign him when he's 39. Ooh, what do you reckon? Should I go for him or no? He's, he's looking pretty good. Uh, is he though? 71 psychology. That's kind of low. You know what? I don't think he's worth 56,000. Per month. Oh, there we go. Sean Dokes. Contract expiring as well. Perfect. Got Monty Trescard. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't look too bad either. If he's cheaper, I might go for him. Because he's essentially the same age. He's a lot cheaper. Under 30,000. That's a pretty, that's a pretty, like, hefty contract, though. Like, 20% per event, a bonus, 30% merchandise cut. Usually I like to, you know, rip my workers off by giving them low merchandise cuts, as, you know, similar to the WWE, I guess. Do I want him, though? Do I want him? Is he really that good, or should I just, should I just wait? I think I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait for someone really, really good to come up. Someone like a Casey Glenn. 
Speaking of KC, I should probably go and check him. Because we might get we might get pretty lucky with some uh some contract rolls as well. Let me let me jump over to let's go companies. Let's go Burning Hammer. Let's go into their roster and I want to search. Uh well, I wanted to search for I guess I'll search for nationality, being American and maybe Canadian as well. American. You got Americana. I mean, Americana's pretty good, but... He's not exactly who I'm looking for. I'm looking for Casey Glenn. we will shortlist him. What's his popularity in Japan? That's only 59. That's it's not that much, really. He's got a year and three months remaining. Pretty cool that you can actually see their, their proper contracts. Yeah, I think I'll definitely have to check it out. I mean, Eli Drake is a guy that had a, a lot of potential. Could, could have really gone to WWE and done something good in NXT, but I guess in a way it's kind of good that he is not he's not with them anymore, or ever with them, I guess. Anyway, Matthew Keith, another guy, eight months, two weeks. Definitely want to go for Matthew Keith, of course. Greg Gage's brother. Uh, probably the better of the two, if we're being real. His time in Japan has really turned him into one of the best workers in the C-verse. That is for sure. Got 44 popularity in the Tri-State as well, already. Uh, did I just add him to the shortlist? I don't know if I did. There we go. Um, we got Panda Mask as well. Not really too fast about Panda. We'll add him to the shortlist, but... I mean, when's his contract run out? Oh, it's ages, nearly two years. Alright. Uh, I guess let's check Canadians as well. Just in case I'm missing someone. Ooh, Gargantuan is with Burning Hammer. That's interesting. Ooh, he didn't really develop... Yeah, I guess CWA signed, uh, didn't sign him for a, a pretty good reason. Yeah, so I guess Prometheus and Gargantuan are a tag team. And not a very good one, looking at that, so... Yeah, it's a, a bit of a yikes. Uh, should I look at, uh, Pride Glory? Ah, I won't even worry about it. Let's, uh, let's get into the next show. I want to do some booking. I mean, that's, yeah, that's a pretty cool idea. Signing, signing Sam Keith. Oh, nice. Successful rib. All right, so for this one, let's make sure we go in the Freedman building instead of checking a generic venue like I did last time. All right, so when is the uh, the pay per view? It's next. Is it next? Up next? Oh no, week four of week four Sunday. So we've essentially we've got two more shows left. Okay. What do I want to do here? Let's go a singles match between... Aaron Andrews and Troy Tornado, I think. And we'll have Aaron Andrews pick up a victory. This is going to be our main event.
again, we're not really doing anything with Troy at the moment, so I think it's fine for him to, to take a loss. Yeah, well, speaking of legacy, I pretty much did that on 2016 for my TCW series over on my YouTube channel. It was called Legacy, and we had uh, J Cord, Sam Key, uh, not Sam Key, Greg Gage, and Aaron Andrews. And it was essentially, I guess, the ripoff of Legacy. Oh, Brian Vesey. Yeah, nice. That would actually be pretty cool. Um, what else do I want to do here? Let's go a tag match. Let's go Mighty Meaty and I guess they can take on the Latino Kings. Have we done that match yet? I don't think we have. No. But let's do that one and Let's give the victory to, yeah, we'll give it to Mighty Mo. I mean, we want to, we do really want to try and push him, so. Uh, I guess we could make that the wild brawl, possibly. And we'll go 10 minutes with it. Yeah, that works. All right, so I think let's, let's start the show off with Carl Rhodes interviewing Wolf Hawkins for that uh that sit down interview. And uh obviously they're gonna be talking about Aaron Andrews, so we'll have him off screen. And uh, I guess, yeah, we'll advance the storyline with that as well. Better not forget to do that. All right, perfect. Uh, so that'll start the show off. What else do we want to do? Uh, I think I want to have a singles match maybe for... Who's someone we haven't really used much recently? I mean, we've actually never used Nick Booth, so maybe we should have him... Versus somebody. Uh, maybe Kid San Juan, possibly. What is our boost popularity? Ooh, it's pretty bad. Uh, let's have Ed Stone versus him, and Ed Stone can actually pick up the victory. Because we haven't really used Ed Stone too much either. Doesn't really have anything to do. Yeah, I should use Human Arsenal a bit more as well. I guess we'll we'll give him a match. Uh, so Ed, open. I wonder if it can be called. It probably can't be called. There's a booth. What are his... Oh, he's got 64 psychology. It's not too bad, actually. Better than I thought it would be. Uh, so that's going to go there. So let's give Ed Stone an angle as well. Just to, just to give him an angle, I guess. I don't know. Yep. Uh, let's go. Well, we want to do storylines. Uh, I guess we can just do the reverse picture or the reverse match with our tag team storyline at the moment. So we'll just do Titan taking on Daryl Devine. Uh, but this time I think we'll give, try and do 12 minutes, but we'll give Daryl the victory. I'm not really too worried about Titan. I think he'll be like a, a good mid-carder, but I don't really think he'll do anything else, anything too special anyway. Okay, he can't actually go for that long. Give it 10. 
Um, I guess we'll make that the storytelling match as well. Um, what else? I guess we'll go... Let's, let's give uh, Titan... Actually, we'll do both. We'll do Killer Shark and Titan in an angle together. Just for our... Uh, just for popularity's sake. Both on Menace, and we'll advance their storyline as well. Uh, I guess up next we'll have... Ooh, what will we have? Mm, I kind of want to have Finley in a match. But I don't particularly want him to lose, if that makes sense. Let's go Sammy back. All right, let's let's do this instead. Let's do a tag match, and let's go semi back and human arsenal to take on like yeah, we'll, we'll go Maverick and we'll go Finio Faraday. With uh, with Sammy picking up the win, and we'll have we'll have Maverick lose. Yeah, that should be pretty good. Uh, then we can also give um yeah, we'll give Sammy an angle as well by himself. Actually, no, we'll, get, we'll go J Cord on, on Sammy. Hopefully we can uh, just make sure that J's popularity is not going to... Uh, do they not have a storyline together? Did I not make a storyline? Huh. I guess not. Anyway, I thought I thought they were in a storyline together. Am I wrong? Hold on. Oh, okay. Maybe that's why their match didn't do so well at the uh, at the pay per view. It'll be back versus cord. Uh, should I make that number one contender? Yeah, we'll make it number one contender. Sammy and Jay start the storyline. I'm, I'm yeah. I, I've honestly, I thought I did that last episode. Maybe I did end it. Possibly. I might have accidentally misclicked it at some stage, but yeah. Yeah, that could be a pretty good storyline, actually. With our uh, one-man army and human arsenal. I mean, their, their, names, uh, their names also sort of mesh together well with, like, an arsenal, army, you know, that type of scenario. Um, so, yeah, maybe I will change. Yeah, let's, let's change it to one. It kind of actually makes more sense in this match. To go with your idea. So one man army and human arsenal together. Um, and I guess they can... The start of their tag team together can sort of be against these guys in Maverick and Finley. Uh, and let's give human arsenal the victory there instead. Yeah, I think that works a lot better. It definitely works a lot better. Nice. All right. So, that one's going to go first. Ford and Sammy back. 
We'll have to give Sammy another match against someone as well. Uh, maybe against Mark Speed, I think. Yeah. I mean, Sammy back Mark Speed was a, a pretty big storyline I actually had on my 2016 series. They went at it for like a couple of months in a pretty good, pretty highly rated few matches as well. So yeah, um, this might be the start of their possible coming together as well. His popularity is really low, Mark Speed. I feel like was it? It might have even been higher on um on twenty sixteen. I think. Yeah, I'm not sure. Either way. All right, it's looking pretty good so far. I think we can go maybe one, one more match for ten minutes. Let's go Benny and the Fox, and they can take on. I guess we'll go. Let's go Greg Gage and Jay Court again. I don't want to give it sixteen minutes to be honest. So let's do that, and let's have Gage get the victory, and Jimmy Fox can lose. Yeah, I really like that match. I think that's a good one. And then if we move this angle up above that, I think that works out pretty well. Perfect, yeah, 125 minutes. Ray Johnson's doing too much refereeing. Get Hap Stander on it, there we go, perfect. Let's do another six-man tag. This time, let's have the Cobras. And a face. Let's go with let's go with T Bone. Can use uh can use a bit of, bit of momentum. And they can take on the uh the new boys. Pride Glory Honor. Ikichi, there we go. Oxford, and we want Hapstander. And then let's go Storm Spillane for the victory there. Nice. On the pre-show. Oh. And we can't call it because of those two. So there we go. Scripted. All right. That looks pretty good. Yeah, let's, uh, let's run that show as well. I mean, I'm assuming that main event's gonna do pretty well. I just noticed I didn't do any angles down here. Yikes. Uh, I might take a little bit of time off these matches here. Bring these back down to 10. And then we can uh, chuck in a Aaron Andrews angle. Give him six. We'll give him six minutes. Perfect. All right. That looks pretty good. Let's run that show. Start off with a 49. Once again, pretty low attendance. This time actually in the Freedman building. Uh, we've got T-Bone Bright and the Cobras defeating Pride, Glory, Honor on the pre-show. Um, probably shouldn't be using Hikichi, considering he's injured. Well, I'm not sure if he actually is still injured, but either way. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. 49's pretty good for the pre-show. Alright, so we then start off with an 86. I mean, Rhodes struggled off script, but Wolf Hawkins did pretty well, so I guess that, that kind of paid off a little bit. I thought Rhodes would do pretty well, considering his entertainment stats are so high. Yeah, I did, uh, my first ever TEW series I did on YouTube was with New York City. Uh, but I haven't checked them out at all. So, I should probably check them out in the C-verse. But, uh, yeah, I don't know, I just became a massive fan of TCW, so... 
I kind of wanted to to do something with them. And of course, Black Canvas Grappling is the current YouTube series I'm doing at the moment, which I'm also pretty heavily invested in. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this is a pretty good angle. So we've got a sit-down interview with Kyle Rhodes interviewing Wolf Hawkins about the uh, the recent attacks or... I guess uh failed attack last week onto champion Aaron Andrews. 86 is pretty good though. Especially considering uh Rose struggled off script. Whoa. We then go into a 77 rated tag team match. We have Greg Gage and Jay Cord defeating Benny and the Fox. With uh Greg Gage submitting flying Jimmy Fox with a Proton Lock. 87 in-ring performance there from Jay Cord. I think we know who our new number one contender is going to be. And Greg Gage in there with a 79 as well. Mid-card champion. That's a, that's a main event level match. As our first match. Alright. Hopefully a, a sign of things to come. We then... We then move into a 92 rated angle. I'm kind of in shock a little bit. That's unexpected. I was, I thought like high 80s might be possible, but a 92 is pretty good. And of course, J-Cord, Sammy back angle together. And uh, we've uh, put them back in the storyline again together properly. And that's also a really good match. A 76 where we have Sammy back defeating Mark Speed with an adrenaline shot. And a 70 in-ring performance there from Sammy. These are some good matches, man. Turning off the uh, the spinal, protecting spinal moves has, I think, definitely improved the, the match quality. At least a little bit, anyway. And then go into a 67-rated tag team match with One Man Army and Human Arsenal coming together to defeat Maverick and Finley O'Faraday, of course. Maverick and Finley have been targeting... One man army, and now Human Arsenal has stepped up to uh to help him out. Yeah, good stuff. 67's also pretty good. And Finley getting a 52 in ring there. We then go into a 76 rated menace angle from the Behemoths. So this one's also pretty good. A little bit lower than Killer Shark by himself, but you know, at the same time, it's uh it's not too bad. Well, not too much worse is what I should say. I'm going to take a sip of water here. All right, so we've got Daryl Devine up next in a 64 rated match, defeating Titan uh, with a Divine Dream Drop. Uh, but we also had Divine off his game, and there is Floyd Goldworthy doing some good work at ringside. Okay, moving on to a 72 rated angle from Ed Stone. Pretty much the man without anything to do at the moment. I'll try and find something for him to do. We could bring back, uh, what is it, the Canadian Animals? With him and uh, Freddy, I think. Because Freddy's not doing anything either, so. I mean, that's a 72, that's pretty good. And we do need some more tag teams, so. That's a, that's something I, I might do, actually. We'll do that up next. Uh, but he goes into his match, gets a 63, where we have Ed Stone defeating Nick Booth. With a party's over. 63 in-ring performance. And we've got Ed Stone and Vita being a good pairing. Of course, his manager. Ed Stone with Benny Benson as a tag team. Yeah, I mean, Benny Benson, in my mind... Obviously, he's with Flying Jimmy Fox. Uh, but I always used to put him together with uh, Danny Fonzarelli. Or I, at least I did back on 2016. And then I had Flying Jimmy Fox with Matt Hocking. Yeah. I mean, that could be that could be an interesting team as well. Ed Stone, Danny Fonzarelli. Anyway, moving on to a 66, we have Mighty Meaty defeating the Latino Kings, 931. 
We have Mighty Mo pinning Rudy Velasquez with a plunging spine buster. And Mighty Mo getting a 72 in ring performance. So that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Whoa. Okay. We get a 99 rated angle from Aaron Andrews. That is, uh, that's Aaron Andrews for you. Yeah. I should have expected that these were going to come soon, but uh, I didn't think it was going to happen in February. I thought it was probably going to happen about five or six months in. Either way, I'm pretty happy. Yeah, good stuff. And we go into the main event, which is actually a little bit weaker. Uh, and that is because Troy and Aaron just don't click and it showed in their performance. But a 74, that's still pretty good. Uh, will it be enough to... To get a 71 overall show rating, I'm not 100% sure, but hopefully it will. Anyways, we do have Aaron Andrews defeating Troy Tornado by pin 4 with a flying body press. Let's finish the show. Okay, for some reason we get a 79. I'm assuming that has a lot to do with the, uh, the, the pretty good angles we had on this show. I mean, most of the matches as well were relatively good. Like, we had a, high, a few... You know, a few decent matches in the 60s. And then we had, what, three matches in the 70s as well. Interesting that Jay Cord and Greg Gage got the best match rating. Interesting. Increases our popularity in 11 regions there. So that's, I'm assuming that's a few regions in the, in the US anyway. And I really want to really get into this next pay-per-view. Ooh, SWF have got on to Demand TV Mexico. Interesting. What is their size in Mexico? Oh, 65. I mean, Mexico is probably our next region that we want to go into. Because we, we already have a bit of spill over ourselves in there. All right, so what did the... All right, we, I think we essentially got the exact same TV rating, a 2.92, which again is just shy of 2.2 million viewers. That's pretty good. Check our size here. So we're still 74 popularity across all of the US regions. Uh, we're up to a couple of 61s in Canada now as well. Just, uh, Maritimes in Saskatchewan. I know I'm probably pronouncing that incorrectly. Tornado's too old and broken down. Yeah, for main event level matches. Yeah, I, I would agree. I thought he might just be able to get carried by Andrews, but that, uh, that negative chemistry really hurt. I think without the negative chemistry, it would, probably would have been like a 76 or 77, somewhere around there. So it wouldn't have been too bad, but yeah, you're right. Tornado is way too old. So we've got 22 popularity in Mexico. What? Let's have a look at broadcasters in Mexico and sort of see what we actually need. So let's go, let's just go, uh, let's just have a look. Let's just have a look first. All right, so big sized, obviously can't go for that one. What about Canal Trace? Ugh, excuse me. Um, yeah, company must be based in Mexico. Company must be based in Mexico as well. Uh, so that's the one that, oh man, that's a big pay-per-view carrier. The SWF. See, we could essentially get on this one, but we we need 30 popularity in six regions in Mexico. Must be based in Mexico. Oh, it must be based in Mexico as well. What about Lared de la Lucha? See, we probably could get on Lared de la Lucha. 
But I'm just wondering if that's gonna mess with our TV deals in the US because it's got coverage in the US. Yeah, interesting. I mean, we could always go with NetStream. We'd, all we need to do is just improve our, our production value. I mean, they have big coverage everywhere. Up until uh, up until Japan. So they got, they got the UK, Mexico, Canada, and the US. To start my own broadcaster. I guess, yeah, we could... Maybe start like a small size broadcaster in Mexico. Maybe in like all the regions, actually. Now that I think about it. Hmm. I mean, it would have been a good idea to maybe get on this pay-per-view provider. Because I think we had the choice last episode or last stream. And that would have been a good one because it actually has Mexico put in there as well. Although it's a lot smaller than the one we got, I think. Minimum popularity. What's the minimum popularity on this one? 34 popularity in five regions and we can get on pay-per-view. And that one is 22 in three regions. I think we might be doing a tour of Mexico. Because we have 22 in two regions. We get one more. We could have a medium-sized pay-per-view provider in Mexico. Okay. Exclusive rights. Uh, across the US. That one's Canada as well. Or oh, in all regions. Oh, that they cover. All regions they cover. Across the US. All right. Yeah, so let's look at size again very quickly. And yeah, as you can see, we're 22, 22. I mean, one more 22. And we'll be on pay-per-view in Mexico. Kind of want to do that. I kind of want to do that. I'm wondering how much that would cost us because we're making a lot of money. We're making about a million a month. I don't think it would cost us that much to run like maybe a, a one hour show, one and a half hour show. And I could pretty much just auto book it as well. Uh, it would be pretty interesting. Let's let's think about doing it next month. So we might start the Mexico tour in March. Yeah, I noticed that about the uh, the broadcasters. So we could we could start our own if we wanted to. Hmm, this guy looks pretty interesting. He's not very good, but... Shooting Star Perez. Alrighty. get through all of this might be doing another live stream later tonight i'm just i'm enjoying playing tcw so much i uh, will just have to wait and see depends on uh some some plans lone star samson sharp
Yeah, I mean, he's nothing too special over in RIPW. Amber Allen. I mean, should we start our women's division right now? She'd be a pretty good, uh, pretty good addition to any women's roster, especially a starting one. It's a lot of money, though. The amazing Amber Allen. Probably don't want to, don't want to bring her in yet, or any any women to to be honest. Natalie Demarco. I mean, she's not great, is she? Still pretty young, but... I mean, she only just got signed as well, I guess. Stevie Stanley. I mean, he's got pretty good star quality. He's a risk taker. Uh, interesting. Oh, he already extended his deal. Never mind. Wrestle World. I haven't actually really looked at Wrestle World because obviously BCG has been uh, my main focus and we already have broadcast deals, but yeah, I mean, that's pretty cool. I have to check out Wrestle World. I've never actually looked at it. What uh, what regions does it cover? Or is it like every region? I have to look into that. Yeah, pretty interesting. Yeah, global. Okay, that's, yeah, that's definitely, definitely a pretty cool thing to see. It's like you would always struggle. Uh, okay, yeah. So we got our next TV show now. All right, backstage incident. Benny Benson, yes, creating a great atmosphere backstage. That's perfect. All right, can we actually get 8,500 people to this show? That'd be great. That would be great. Okay, so this is a go-home show. So, with that said... What do I want to do? That's a good question. I mean, there's a number of ways I could go about it. We could do like a, a six-man or an eight-man... I don't really think I want to run a B show. If I brought Saturday Showcase back, it would probably be an A show. I just, I find B shows are kind of, kind of pointless. Kind of. I know they do a lot for improving workers and stuff, but I don't know. If I brought it back, I would bring it back as an A show. Uh, let's go, let's go an eight man. Let's, uh, let's blend some storylines together. All right, do I want to have the behemoths? Uh, would mean I'd have to use chance. Yeah, probably not. All right, let's, let's go like this. So let's go Aaron Andrews, Sammy Back, One Man Army, and Benny Benson to take on... Wolf Hawkins, Jay Cord, Doc Hammond, and finally Greg Gage. Now th this is a main event. This is going to rate really well. I can already tell. Might even get, let's give it twenty-two minutes. Just an extra, you know, an extra two minutes on there, and we'll give the victory to Sammy. And he can pin Doc. Doc's kind of in there to take the pinfall. It kind of fits him being in there as well, of course. One man army's in there, so Guide and Scout both in the same match, versing each other. And then, of course, Aaron Andrews wants a bit of revenge on Doc. 
and Wolf as well. Uh, why did I do Aaron Andrews to lose? Doc to lose. There we go. Yes. All right. Slow build, decisive. Yeah, that's a that's a pretty good main event. I feel like. I feel like it's going to rate pretty well. Uh, what else have we got? Let's do a tune-up match for the Behemoths. They can take on the Puerto Rican boys. A nice, easy 10-minute match. Like I said, just a, a pretty easy tune-up. We'll actually give... Give Titan the victory there. He did take a loss last show. There we go. Uh, let's put Daryl on commentary. Actually, let's... Yeah, let's do that. Uh, but I've also got to put our new commentators in as well. Completely forgot about doing that. Oxford, the road agent. There we go. Alright, what else do I want to do? Let's have... Let's create that storyline between Danny, so Danny versus Matt Hocking. Let's go Danny F, because I'm not going to try and spell out his last name, versus Matt Hocking. And we'll go Danny Fonzarelli. I mean, it's actually pretty easy to type. And he's going to take on Matt Hocking. And uh, I guess we could throw in... I guess we could throw in Ed Stone in that one as well. And maybe Freddie Huggins. Just be like a, a four-man. That's kind of like the mid-card, I guess. Possibly a, a new challenger. Or uh, Greg coming out of that one. Uh, so let's... Yeah, let's do something with that. Let's actually go a tag team match. And we'll have Danny... And Ed teaming up against Matt and Freddy. Uh, we'll give it. Oh no, we'll we'll give it twelve, I guess. And let's have let's have Danny win. Freddy can lose. And then we'll go open and decisive. Yeah, so that one should be pretty good as well. Let's let's do some angles. So how do we want to finish the show? I think we want to do... I mean, we could just essentially just do all eight members fighting each other. Let's do that. So Aaron Andrews, Sammy Back, One Man Army, and Benny Benson. And they're going to take on Wolf. Doc. And uh, who else is in it? Greg and Jay. So yeah, everyone's just, everyone's just going to be fighting. Eight men fighting to take us off the air. And I, I kind of like that. It's blending all the storylines together. Uh, we'll give it four minutes. And that's going to advance, well, that storyline, that storyline. Uh, it's not going to advance that one. Uh, but it is going to advance that one, so there we go. And I think I want Oxford to road agent that one as well. Alright, so that's going to be the final angle on the show. Uh, we'll do another... I guess we'll just do another Aaron Andrews angle. Maybe we'll... Let's do the face team. So Sammy can be there. One man army. And... Who's the last one? Benny Benson. Let's... Let's do all of them. Hopefully they'll... Ugh, oh, Sammy... Why does Sammy have to be so annoying like that for? Uh, I'm, I think I'm just... Ugh. I guess I won't script him. Let's let's see what happens. 
pretty frustrating, but I mean, I can't really do anything about it, really. Then let's go with Killer Shark and Titan. They can both have a Menace Angle again. Essentially just, you know, it's like just tuning them up for the, for the pay-per-view itself. Uh, oops, we need to go up one there. Alright, what else are we going to do? Let's have a Joshua Taylor match. He can take on Dazzling Dave Diamond. I haven't used Roderick Remus. I need, really need to try and use him somehow. Just find something for him to do. Even if it's just, I don't know, squash match or something. Maybe he can take on Mighty Mo. That'd be a pretty good match for Mo. And Mo doesn't really have anything going on for him at the pay-per-view. Maybe we'll do that at the pay-per-view if we have any time left. So let's do this one. Let's give it 10 minutes and we'll have Taylor get the victory. And I think we're going to have a... We want to do a botched... I think we'll do a botched interference on Dazzling Dave Diamond by T-Bone. Uh, which is essentially going to cost him the match. So, yeah. Let me sit forward a little bit here. Uh, what else do I want to do? I want to... I think I want to have an angle, actually, for Joshua Taylor. I want to sort of gauge just how well he's doing. So that can go before his match there. Uh, we can go with Hocking and Huggins. Yeah, let's let's do an angle for the heel team here. Um, they are going to lose the match, so I guess they can have a an angle together. And that can actually advance its storyline as well. Yep, so that's fine. We'll just chuck that one there. Uh, we've still got a lot more time left. Uh, let's do a... Let's do a singles match with... Vinio Faraday and Human Arsenal. And let's have, let's have Human Arsenal win. Because we, I, I don't like having Finley lose so much. But honestly, there's, there's not really much I can do because his popularity is just so low. I guess I could maybe spam some angles for him. Let's, uh, let's have him lose here and we might give the victory to, to him on the pay-per-view. Possibly. Uh, so yeah, decisive. That one's fine. Uh, let's... Uh, I kind of wanted to do an angle for Human Arsenal and One Man Army. But I guess... We won't do that. Yeah, I guess we get it. Let's have, uh... Let's have Kyle Rhodes interview... Human Arsenal. And we'll just have a, a backstage interview. Yeah, so there we go. And he can just essentially talk about One Man Army. And of course about Finley O'Faraday. Let's go with a random tri uh, trios match. Well, not, not trios, but six man tag. 
And let's go with Mighty Meaty. And they can take on... Well, they can team up with someone. And we can have... Let's go Damien Dastardly on the other team as a heal. Maybe... I guess we could use Roderick Remus now. Oh, do I, yeah, I guess, I guess so. Uh, who else though? Who's another face? Should really um. Yeah, maybe Bart Biggins. He's got a lot of popularity. Bart Biggins. Essentially 59, well, 57 in the Mid-South, because he's lost a little bit, but. Yeah, all right, heels. Who are they going to take on? Jeremy Courtney? Chili Momentum? I'm honestly surprised Courtney is still with the company. I thought he might have been released and picked up by a, a regional company. Uh, I guess let's go with Chris Flynn. I haven't really used Flynn too much. Yeah, I mean, that works. Let's give... Let's give Mo the victory. Yeah, that's fine. Again, it's just a, a bit of a throwaway match. Let's go with an let's go with an angle. Can uh can he cut an angle? Uh not really. So let's go with I just went we'll go mighty meaty, I guess. We'll just go mighty mo and tanner. Yeah, I mean it, it works. You know, it is what it is. All right, we need a storytelling match and a wild brawl. This one can be storytelling. And this one can be wild brawl. All right, perfect. Let's uh, do another pre-show. Uh, this time, go a tag team match. Let's have... Divine Fortune take on the Latino Kings again. Shall they verse each other? Yeah. It's going to be on the pre-show though, so it doesn't really matter too much. And um, we'll give the victory to Chance. And again, we can't call the match because of Hector Galindo. But we'll have to do it like this okay nice and scripted uh up next let's go with let's go with the cobras and the cobras can take on uh goya and blackburn and we'll give marvel the victory in this one and again we'll have to script it as well So decisive. There we go. You always picture Tana as Rikishi. Can't help it. I mean, they, they probably would look fit, you know. I mean, based on his render, they do actually look pretty similar. So I can I can kind of see what you're putting putting out there. I just hope that he doesn't have a, a fat ass like you know, like Rikishi. Although he probably does. He's a big boy, so he's definitely a big boy. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's a, oh, that was supposed to be on the pre-show. Yeah, there we go. Okay, that looks pretty good. Go home show, let's do it. Starting off with a 41, we have the American Cobras defeating Daigo Goya and Matt Blackburn when uh, Marvel pinned Blackburn with a Marvel Breaker. Not, not great, but it is what it is. These guys are on excursion, so... 
you know, they're, they're pretty bad. They're pretty fresh young lions coming from Pride Glory. And then we go into a 56 where we have Divine Fortune defeating the Latino Kings when Chance Fortune pinned Hector Galindo with a stroke of luck. Much, much better, much better performance in that match rating. All right, so we then start the show with show off with Mighty Meaty, of course, no longer the number one contenders for the tag titles. Yeah, they don't really have anything to do. However, they do have a match up next. It does pretty well, getting a 69. We have Bart Biggins and Mighty Meaty defeating Damien Dastardly, Roderick Remus, and Chris Flynn when Mighty Mo pinned Damien Dastardly with a plunging spine buster. Yeah, Damien with a, a 50 in ring performance, that's really not too bad. He's a guy like I do want to push fairly soon. He's, uh, he's super talented and very young. All right, moving into our backstage interview with Human Arsenal. Gets us a 69 as well for this angle. And of course, he basically is just talking about the fact that he and One Man Army are going to link up, uh, possibly as a new tag team, to try and take on the behemoths down the line and... You know, try and recapture a bit of former glory for both. You know, both both have been former tag team champions, but with other partners, of course. We then go into his match, which gets a 62. But we have Human Arsenal defeating Finley O'Faraday. By pinfall with an ammo dump. A bit of a strange finishing maneuver, but it works, I guess, for him. Just, just the word dump being in any finisher... Sounds a little bit strange. Anyway, it's not a bad match. 62, considering it's Finley. They both got 55 in-ring performances, so... That's pretty good. Pretty happy with that one. We then go into a 71 for Joshua Taylor's angle. Not a great angle, to be honest. Yeah, I always, always, for some reason, I think Joshua Taylor's better than what he actually is. So yeah, interesting. Uh, so yeah, his match, his match does really well though. Getting us to 75, where we have Joshua Taylor defeating Dazzling Dave Diamond by submission with the Butterfly Lock. And then during the match, we also had T-Bone Bright accidentally hit Triple D. So yeah, T-Bone trying to get one over on Joshua Taylor, backfired, and in a res well, as a result, he ends up costing Dazzling Dave Diamond the match and basically helped the, the guy he's feuding against. 75, though, is really good for a 10-minute match. So Taylor's promos are bad, but his matches are really good. Okay, I'll take it. Okay, we then go into a 69 for Matt Hocking and Freddie Huggins. Of course, a bit of an unlikely partnership. But of course, Freddie has a bit of animosity still towards Ed Stone, his former tag team partner. And of course, Hocking and Danny Fonzarelli uh, really don't like each other at the moment. Their tag team match also getting a 69 where we have Danny Fonzarelli and Ed Stone defeating Matt Hocking and Freddie Huggins. When Danny pinned Freddy with a retro rocket. Yeah, it's just a pretty good match. That's a that's a solid mid-card match, I think. I mean, Danny was the worst performer, so... I mean, he was off his game, so I guess we'll put it down to that. I won't judge him too hard. Uh, you're American. I was wondering, do most Australians have any feelings towards England or English people? Uh, I have to say, I personally love England. I have been there before. Uh, and I have a lot of family in England as well. Like a lot of aunties, cousins and stuff like that. Um, but I'm a big soccer fan, big football fan. So, yeah, I, I went over there back in 
2015. Went to a, a couple of Arsenal games, and it was a pretty incredible experience. Um, yeah, Aussies and English... Aussies and the English probably have a a pretty good understanding of each other. We've got like a lot of sporting or different codes of sport that often have rivalries against each other, like the cricket, uh, like rugby. What else? I'm trying to think of any, any other sports. I would say soccer as well, but not really. Um... Would you like to come to Australia one day? I mean, Australia is it's a pretty incredible place. And that's, you know, with me living here my whole life. There's definitely a lot to see and a lot to do, especially in Sydney, where I live. Lots of uh, different artifacts, not artifacts, uh, landmarks, I guess, for you to come and see. Harbour Bridge, Opera House. What else? <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know what else. Anyway, moving on uh, to a 75 for the Behemoth's Angle, Killer Shark Titan. I think that's even a little bit lower than the last one as well. So, uh, I mean, I feel like they're gradually getting worse, but that could also be the road agent. Could probably take note who was the road agent for the, the better angles. Either way, it doesn't really matter too much. Their tune-up match gets a 65. We have the Behemoths defeating the Puerto Rican boys when Titan pinned Kid San Juan with a Titanic choke slam. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty good match. A 65, considering the Puerto Rican boys haven't really been doing much. I mean, Island Boy Apollo with a 55. Very good. I mean, Kid San Juan, not so much, but yeah. Moving on. To a 79 for our face team angle. Uh, Aaron Andrews came across well, but struggled when going off script. Interesting. Uh, but yeah, Sammy worked superb without a script. And yeah, One Man Army worked the crowd well as well. Well, good, good for Sammy back. You know, he's the one that wanted... <laughs> to not be scripted in the angle. Ponty boy. How you going, man? Good to see you, even if it is pretty early. 6.38am. Yeah, I mean, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Hopefully, you, you I, I am doing another stream later. Perhaps in another five or six hours, possibly. So uh, you, might, you might be around for that one. Maybe not. It's probably going to be about, what, midday for you. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, also, no guarantees about the stream. But I, I possibly might be streaming later as well. Anyway, let's get into the main event. I knew this main event was going to be really good. But I did not expect it to get an 89. Okay. 89 for this total wrestling main event. And we have the team of Aaron Andrews, Sammy Back, One Man Army, and Benny Benson defeating Wolf Hawkins, Doc Hammond, Jay Cord, and Greg Gage in 21.53 when Sammy submitted Doc with a back on your back and Benny Benson off his game. Which is unfortunate because that might have boosted it up to a 90. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Having having all these talented guys like Wolf, Jay, Greg, Sammy, and, you know, Aaron, I, I knew it was going to be good. I'm just hoping that it might elevate these other guys a little bit more. So they'll hopefully, you know, get a little popularity boost from being in such a good rated match. But yeah, super happy with an 89. And the angle afterwards, not as good. 78. And we just have, again, all eight members after the match brawling with each other to finish the show and go off the air. And Benny Benson looked dreadful in this segment. Okay. Yeah, I might check that, actually. So let's finish the show. 
get an 82 overall show rating, so that's pretty good. Uh, and it looks like it's increased our popularity in all 18 regions for our broadcasters, so definitely happy with that. Hopefully we might be edging closer to a 75 popularity in the US regions. I hope Sammy's not in time decline. That would uh, that'd be pretty frustrating. Because I do see him as one of our top stars. Sweet Danny. Yeah, I mean, she's okay. Good star quality on her. How much would she actually be? Not that I'm going to base my division off her. Yeah. All right, we've got a semi back opinion. Uh, he's liking what he's hearing from Damien Dastardly. There's money in the kid. Well, he likes his promos. There's money in his promos. And we get a 3.03 .03 TV rating. 2.276 million. Yeah, that's pretty good. Very happy with that. That was a good go-home show, I think. Well, obviously the, the main event was pretty good. All right. Now, do I want to change my announcers for the event? Because they've got, they've got adequate experience. What happens if I... Let's go Max Smith. Okay, that's, that's fine. Let's chuck Max Smith in there. Uh, and then for Total Wrestling, let's change Azaria. I wonder if that's going to do anything. Oh, yeah. All right, let's keep his area in there, at least until his contract actually runs out. Uh, and let's just put Max Smith into the TV show announcer booth as well. Yeah, I like that. And hopefully they might come out with a little bit of chemistry, these two. Hopefully. Probably not, not enough time, but either way. Uh, What else? Anything else I need to do? Let's have a look at creative. That's pretty interesting. J Cord up at number two. Hmm, interesting. I wonder if he's what's his star quality? Ninety-two. Okay. I mean he'd be a great figurehead if he was a face. Although his charisma is a little bit low. What about Wolf? Wolf's also ninety-two. Uh, but he's an amazing heel as well. So I couldn't really make him face either. Yeah, I don't know. It is what it is. Still at 81 popularity. That's, I mean, he took the loss, so I guess I understand that. Hmm, Jay Cord's popularity is not doing too well, though. He was up to a 75, and now he's come back down a little bit after losing that main event. Ugh. I mean, it's it's going to be fine. He'll be fine because he's going to pick up the victory. Anyway, let's have a look at... Uh, is there no more time decline on here? Ah, oh, that sucks. Oh, yeah. I might do that instead. You're right. So let me... Well, yeah, we'll, we'll go with Lee Bambino. That, that's a better idea. And then I guess we can, uh, there's the, the thing with, uh, Bam, Bam, like Bambino's being paid per month anyway. So it kind of makes even more sense financially to put him in. Because Mac is only on the, uh, the per appearance wage. Or salary. All right. I think, uh, I think we're good. Let's get into the pay-per-view and start booking that. Uh, I'm just trying to think, just double checking in my head if there's anything else. No, I think we're good. I think we, let's have a little look at the titles. I want to get a gauge, red gauge, of what our prestige is. We've got 66, 82, and 60 for the television. All right. All right. Hopefully we get some increases on them. That'd be nice.
I'm looking forward to booking this pay-per-view, I think. Well, I don't think... I, I know I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a good show, is what I'm trying to say. I think there's potential for quite a few matches to actually steal the show. I think J-Cord sent me back. I know it's the second time we're doing it. But I think that match will be a lot better this time. Because so I'm thinking I probably actually like accidentally ended the storyline before the last pay-per-view when they versed each other. Because so they only got a 69. And it just doesn't seem right. Hmm. Either way, I mean, it doesn't really matter. But I'm hoping, I'm hoping they're going to do a little bit better. Anyway, we've got Eric Strong here. Now, he would actually be a guy I would actually like to bring in. He, oh, his psychology is just not as good as I thought it would be. He's, he's got the star quality, though. He does have good star quality. How much? Oh, 30,000 as well. I mean, they, they're going 40,000 for him. So I don't think we're, we're going to be able to compete. Ooh, killer shark. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh, how much is he on right now? Can I check that? He's only on 23,000. That's going to be an expensive contract, man. Uh, I'd like to get that as low as possible. I'd like to get a higher... Can we try like 35,000? I know it's probably not going to be successful, but... I mean, realistically, I just want to go, like, as low as possible. Alright, 40, 43,000. How much was it? 43,100, I think. And he wants a higher cut of the merchandise, which is understandable. He'll probably want, what, 30%? Yep. 30%. All right. I mean, that looks pretty good. I think actually, like, getting him on a, a $43,000 contract will actually help us in the future as well. Hopefully no one else comes in. I'm really hoping no one else comes in. We got Brandon James as well. Are they... Doesn't look like they're uh, offering him an extension. I know he's really old, but Big Cat Brandon might be a, a pretty good senior member to bring in. I'm assuming he's probably in time decline, though, looking at his stamina and his psychology and stuff. Yeah, I mean, he's got good popularity as well, still. Um, let's monitor his situation. Because I wouldn't mind bringing him in, maybe, to... To do, like, a per-show appearance sort of fee like that. Well, what I was thinking for Brandon is to just to try and take his popularity and feed our own guys. He's got 72 pop. And if we sort of job him out to guys like Joshua Taylor, Killer Shark, uh, maybe some other guys that are coming up, Greg Gage as well. I think, yeah, I think we'll, we'll just monitor his situation for now. Uh, but everything else, that's fine. All right. 
Let's get into the pay-per-view. So the Ketley Arena is supposed to be our venue. Right, we've got Freddie Huggins lifting the locker room, doing some impressions. And then we've got Wrestler's Court for Ed Stone, who has improved his... Well, he's got a positive impact on him now. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I was thinking. Like a, a, a gatekeeper. Probably pass the torch, actually. Is probably more what I would want from him. So put him like straight into a, a storyline with Greg for the uh for the television title. Sort of like one last title run for Big Cat Brandon. And then he could verse guys like guys like Killer Shark once he splits up with Titan. And then maybe maybe Finley O'Faraday as well. Like further on down the line. Once he's lost some of that popularity. Yeah, probably just a one-year contract. We'll just go, like, one year. Like, year to year. Essentially. Like, see... Sort of see where his popularity is after that first year. Because I'm assuming it would be pretty bad. Anyway, what are we... What do we got to do here? Broadcasters. Okay. Chuck both of these on. Canada 1. And USA Free Choice. And let's book our arena. So we're expecting 39,000 fans. Oh, we did actually go up to 75. We're up to 75 popularity across the US. And 62s in most of the regions in Canada. Very nice. All right, so it's got us in the Ketley Arena, which is 30,000. We're missing out on 10,000 people, though. I think I want to go with the... Let's go with the 50,000. So, what is that? What venue is that? Um, yeah, Dust Bowl Fields. There we go. Let's go Dust Bowl Fields again. Alrighty, let's do the main event first. Alright, so I did say that I wanted it in like a steel cage, which does make sense because then the, uh, what do you call it, the syndicate won't be able to get involved. So let's do a cage modern. Uh, 25 minutes I think will be good enough. I mean, I, I would go 30, but I feel like it might be a bit of a risk. And Aaron Andrews, Wolf Hawkins for the TCW World Heavyweight title. And we'll have Robert Oxford be the road agent for that one as well. And yeah, it's going to be a pretty special match, that is for sure. All right, so that's the main event. Uh, I guess we can... Let's do the... Yeah, let's let's do another specialty match. I mean, we can essentially go all specialty matches because it's the war to settle the score. And pretty much most of our storylines will be ending on this show. Let's go a... Yeah, no, no shenanigans. It's a steel cage match, so they can't get involved. Uh, less. Do you want to do last man standing? Yeah, let's go last man standing for Greg Gage and Benny Benson. Let me check his popularity. I was up to 59. It's down one point. Okay. But he, he should get it back with this victory. We'll give that one 20 minutes as well for the television title. Oxford to be the road agent there as well. And then we'll go open, slow built, decisive. Nice. 
Uh, up next, we'll go semi back J Cord. Uh, do I want to do a specialty match for this one? I'm not sure. Don't think it's really necessary. Nah, uh, let's let's just do a singles match. Cause I want to I want to see them do better than they did last time. Uh, what's Jay's popularity? Seventy three, and Sammy is also pretty much seventy three. Wasn't he higher though? I feel like he was. Yes, yeah, so he was. He was 75, dropped down to 70, and now he's back up a little bit, but probably going to drop back down again. Probably. Yeah, because J Cord is going to become our new number one contender for the World Heavyweight title. Uh, so yeah, slow built, decisive. And again, we'll go Robert Oxford for that as well. Perfect. Uh, what else do I want to do? Uh, okay, so we've got the, the pre-booked match in as well. So we'll just add that to the booking sheet. Uh, that one's nice and easy. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. Our winner is going to be Killer Shark. Yep, perfect. All right, so that's our other title match done. What else are we going to do? We're going to do, let's do a first blood match. Our first blood is... Okay, it's not too bad. It's low risk. Low content risk is what I mean. And, oh, we do have Eddie Peake as well. I always keep forgetting about him. Always forget about him. Uh, we might do something special with him next month where we have him team up with the Behemoths because they're in the same stable, the Sinner Society. Uh, but let's have... So it was going to be Joshua Taylor and T-Bone Bright. And they're going to be in a first blood match. Uh, Taylor to get the victory there, though. This was kind of just a... Bit of a nothing storyline for Taylor. Because he's just been really dominant. You know, just to try and see what T-Bone Bright actually has in him. I mean, he's, he's kind of held his own a little bit. It's just his psychology that really, really lets him down, I guess. Uh, so our next match is going to be... Hmm, interesting. I guess we'll do a rematch with Danny F. Danny Fonzarelli. Yeah, so Danny Fonzarelli and Matt Hocking are going to go at it again. I can find his name. There he is. Uh, definitely not going to be able to do twenty minutes. Let's go. Let's go thirteen. Actually, let's go. Let's go ten because we need a wild brawl as well. And Danny's going to pick up a bit of a return victory. Of course, Matt Hawking cheated to win in their first encounter. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Let's have, we'll go Joel Bryant, Road Agent. Uh, we do need a storytelling match as well. So I might put that one down there. Mm, I might put it above that one, actually. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, and next. Uh, do I want to go Ed Stone, or do I want to go One Man Army? And Maverick. Or should we... Let, let, let's just do a, a tag team rematch. And we'll use our, our new team that we just formed recently with One Man Army and Human Arsenal. And they'll take on Finleo Faraday and Maverick. 
Uh, we'll give it 16 as well. Going to be a pretty pretty good match. Let's give Finley the victory onto Human Arsenal as well. And if we if we have to, we'll keep him strong. Oh, one man army is extremely unhappy. He's not even taking the loss. Ah, uh, the pinfall. Sorry. Uh, let's we'll make it tainted. And then let's keep him strong, I guess. Yeah, it's kind of strange. Either way, I guess it doesn't really matter. Uh, now, I'm wondering if there's anything else I actually need to do. I'm trying to think, because I don't really want to leave anything off, but I'm pretty sure that's everything. Okay, I'll fix that up. Oh, that's, that's probably why. Okay. So I want human arsenal to lose. And I wonder if, if I take this out now. Yeah, there we go. Cheers, man. Thank you for, thank you for noticing that. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have. And that was uh, the reason why One Man Army was upset, because I think it was set to make him take the loss anyway. Awesome. All right. I think that looks pretty good, because we, we want to have a few angles throughout the show. Like, I want to have an Aaron Andrews angle there before the show. Uh, not before the show, sorry. Before the main event. That looks pretty good. Let's go with a Greg Gage angle onto Benny Benson. That'll, of course, advance their storyline again. Yep, all right. I guess we'll just go with a a J chord angle because I kind of want J chord to to get the most out of this pay per view really because he is going to be the number one contender. Uh, and again, we'll go with another menace angle for the behemoths. Pretty pretty standard at this point. So menace and menace give him a bit of success in there as well. That'll advance their storyline, even though technically their storyline's kind of over. Yeah, yeah, I'll make that the, the storytelling match in a second. Uh, right there, perfect. Storytelling, there we go. Uh, what's wrong? Referee? Oh, Robert Oxford and Charles Hapstander. Make that Ray Johnson. And we'll make that Joel Bryant as well. All right, there we go. Uh, promos. Let's go, let's go Joshua Taylor onto T-Bone Bright. Uh, just so he can get involved. Hopefully get a little bit of a boost from some sort of popularity, hopefully. Uh, that can advance their storyline as well, even though... Even though st their storyline is essentially going to end, I might actually end it with the match. So it can advance there. We'll book that out, put it before the match. And then during the match, we'll go in and we'll make it end storyline as well. Oops. There we go. Perfect. All right. Uh, are there any other storylines that need to end as a result of this one? I don't think so. Maybe j Cord Sammy back. But, I mean, that storyline kind of just started, technically. Um...
yeah, I guess we could have, let's have Rhodes. Yeah, I guess he can, he can actually just do an interview. Uh, what's his name? Kyle. Alrighty, so he'll do an interview, I guess on One Man Army, and um, yeah, and Human Arsenal. And that can advance their storyline as well. I uh, probably should put him in the storyline as well. I don't think I did that with Human Arsenal. So yeah, we'll add him as a major role. Yeah, I mean, a pre-show kickoff show. I don't know if I want to do that. I don't know. It, that seems a little bit silly. I feel, just feel like we don't really need it. You know what I mean? Like, like we'll do, we'll do pre-show matches, but actually, I don't really have anything for, for Eddie Peak. So maybe I should do something. Maybe Eddie Peake could uh, intervene in this match. Then we can just chuck him on the pre-show. So let's do outside interference finish on Daryl Devine by Eddie Peake. I mean, it's it's going to look make the behemoths look a little less strong. But overall, it's going to make the... The whole stable look a little bit more strong with the leader coming in to help his boys, you know, essentially retain their titles. I like that. And then we can just chuck him on the pre-show. And um, I guess he can have a tag match with uh, Nick Booth. Kind of makes sense, seeing as he's the youngest member of Sinner Society. Ooh, actually, now I'm thinking we could... Put them on the main show and have them take on Mighty Mo and Tanner. We might say we'll save that for the future. We'll save that for the future. And I'll just I'll have them take on the Cobras. Either way, it should be a pretty good match. I mean hopefully his uh basics will rub off a little bit onto the onto the Cobras. He still has pretty good popularity. He's at 65. And we'll give Eddie the win. Uh, let's have Brent Hill be the road agent there as well. I'll be back in one second, guys. Give me a sec. So had to go and answer the front door. Perfect timing. All right. Uh, so Hap Standard, again, too much refereeing. So I think he's going to be, yeah. Get Ray Johnson to referee that one. Uh, and I think we'll, yeah, we'll do another pre-show match. Let's, let's 
do a six man just to try and get some more people on the card. So let's go. Let's go with Mighty Meaty, uh, and they can take on the Elite and someone else. So let's go with. Uh, we'll go with Ed Stone again. We're, we're not using him on the actual pay per view, but his he's still involved in that other storyline, so he'll do something with that. And uh, they can verse. Yeah, Troy Tornado and the Elite. Although Mux Speed's not really doing anything yet, either. Alright, so we'll give that 12 on the pre-show as well. Uh, we need Ray Johnson. Let's go Brent Hill. Let's have Ed Stone win, why not? It's only a pre-show match. Really doesn't matter that much at all. Uh, okay, and I guess we'll go one more. Let's go another tag. And we'll have the Puerto Rican boys take on Doc Hammond and Chris Flynn, I guess. I'd kind of like to put Damien Dastardly in there. Oh yeah, you read my mind with Flynn and Hammond. Uh, but let's, yeah, we'll try them as a team. I guess Damien can miss out. I wouldn't mind Damien being in a stable of some sort down the line. Yeah, Doc can get the victory. Oh, I messed up again. Uh, Brent Hill. Pretty sure. All right, there we go. Uh, might move that one down, because I think that'll be a little bit better than the other match. Possibly. Alright, what's wrong? Finley is being used too much. Yes, he is, you're right. Okay, there we go. And it was Hapstander as well. Was it? Hold on. Hapstander? Oh, Ray Johnson. Uh-oh. Uh, either way, who's doing the main event? Appstander. Okay, so Ray Johnson can be overused. That's fine. All right. Too many matches, too little referees. Let's, uh, let's run. Similar character. Damien's a similar character to Jay Cord in your, in your mind. Yeah, I, I would say they're fairly similar. I would say Damien's probably a little bit more, in my mind, in my opinion, he's probably more comedic. Not, not He doesn't have a comedy gimmick, but I'm sure he uses... You know, uses his intelligence to, to make people look stupid. If you know what I mean. I think that's what, in my mind, that's the way that I see Damien Dassley. Like, he's very smart... He's very cunning, and yeah, Court is definitely more arrogant. I mean, Court has every right to be arrogant. I mean, his father was probably one of the best in the C-verse. He's got a tournament named after him. Anyway, that looks pretty good. Let's uh, let's run the show. I'm, I'm excited about this. I'm very excited. Alright, wow, okay, we start off with a 72 rated pre-show match. Ed Stone and Mighty Meat defeating Troy Tornado and the Elite in 12 minutes. When Ed Stone pinned Nate Johnson with a party's over. That's a good match. That's a very good match, okay. We then go into a 56 where we have Doc Hammond and Chris Flynn. Well, there we go, they don't work well as a team together. I guess I have my answer. Uh, but they do defeat the Puerto Rican boys when Doc Hammond submitted Kid San Juan with a Texas Cloverleaf. Pretty cool finisher, I like that. But yeah, negative chemistry between these two. This is another reason why I want to disband this, uh, this new syndicate. Anyway, moving on to a 59 where we have Eddie Peake and Nick Booth defeating the American Cobras. When Eddie Peak pinned Storm Spillane with a peak of perfection. 
Eddie with a 64, and we have Marvel with a 57. Wow. Eddie Peak seemed off his game. Are you kidding me? He's got one appearance per month, and he's going to be off his game on a pre-show. Come on, man. Oh, anyway. All right, so we start the show off with a 68, where we have Kyle Rhodes interviewing the newly formed tag team of One Man Army Human Arsenal, of course, going into their rivalry match. Ring Rust? Yeah, I mean, is that even a thing, though? I'm not sure if that's a thing on TW 2020. It might be. I might have not seen that. Uh, but either way, yeah, really, really good angle, considering they're all off script. I do like to do the these interview angles off script. So, yeah, possibly it might be added. I don't know. Possibly. I mean, it would be a good thing if it was added, but I'm not sure if it is. Anyway, moving into their tag team match, getting a 60. We have Finley O'Faraday and Maverick defeating One Man Army and Human Arsenal in 12 minutes. 46 seconds when Finley O'Faraday pinned Human Arsenal with an atomic spine buster. It's not a bad match. 60s. You know, it's probably going to be the worst match on the card, in my opinion, but I still think it's pretty good. Finley a little bit lacking, though, only getting a 47 in-ring performance, but overall, it's pretty, it's pretty good. All right, so we then go into a 68, where we have Joshua Taylor and T-Bone Bright. Uh, essentially just Joshua Taylor cutting his promo onto T-Bone, saying that he's he's just not up to the, the same level, the same caliber that, you know, Joshua Taylor is. Or the same caliber of wrestler that Joshua Taylor is. Their match, though, does really, really well. It's a first blood match, getting a 79. And that's pretty surprising for T-Bone Bright. I didn't really expect him to, to be putting on a match. I know he got carried, but 79? That's crazy. All right. We've got Joshua Taylor defeating T-Bone Bright in a first blood match in 20 minutes when T-Bone Bright was busted open. And Joshua Taylor getting a 77 in-ring performance there. Yeah, I mean, Taylor is definitely ready for, for something else, something a bit more main event level Pro probably sammy back would be the the next sort of storyline yeah brawl based matches yeah i mean that's that's a good point to make first bloods are ball uh, first bloods are brawl based and it's a tongue twister that one all right moving on to uh, i would say it's probably the least important match on the card it's a 65. It's essentially just a rematch from uh, Total Wrestling. And we have uh, Danny Fonzarelli this time getting some revenge, defeating Matt Hocking in 9 minutes 32 by pinfall with a retro rocket. So yeah, a bit of revenge. And again, you know, they, they do have good chemistry together, which is sort of the reason why we put them in a storyline together. Moving on to a 76 rated menace angle for the behemoths. Going into their tag title tag title match, looking to retain. That match does, yeah, that's pretty pretty good. 70 rated match for the Behemoths, and they defeat Divine Fortune in just under 16 minutes with uh, Killer Shark pinning Daryl Divine with a big bite. And uh, yeah, the Behemoths make number seven, make defense number seven of their TCW World Tag Team titles. Uh, interesting that the interference didn't go through with uh, Eddie Peak. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, but Titan was off his game, and Daryl Devine also seemed off his game as well. So this match could have been better. Could have been better. But yeah, both members of the Behemoths getting a 64 in-ring performance. There are, they're definitely getting quite over, I think. Probably Titan as well. 
I mean, I'm not complaining, but I don't really want to push Titan. I, f I find Killer Shark to be the, the better of the two. Either way, another title defense there. We then go into an 89 rated angle for J Cord. This guy. This guy is going to be something special, man. He really is. Future world champion for the series. That is, that is for sure. And this match does a lot better. Shark versus T-Bone. That's a, that's a good shout as well. Could maybe do like another brawl-based match. But yeah, these guys, Sammy back, J Cord, getting an 83 rated match. Uh, the match deserved better color commentary as well. And we do have J Cord defeating Sammy back in under 20 minutes. Wipe him for with a cradle pile driver. And we have J Cord becoming the number one contender for the world heavyweight title. And he deserves it. 87 in-ring performance there from Jay. He's, uh, he's ready. He's ready for a title shot, that's for sure. And uh, this has been a pretty good storyline. Especially once we added it back as a storyline as well. Alright, we then go into a 67 where we have Greg Gage and he's cutting an angle onto Benny Benson. Kind of just saying that Benny's a bit of a joke. You know, his whole career has been a joke. You know, what would make anyone think that Benny is going to be able to take the title off of a, you know, wrestling royalty such as myself being Greg Gage? Six, uh, 67's not great, but I guess Greg's not the best at angles. Much more focused on matches. And the match does pretty well. Gets us a 78, where we have Greg Gage defeating Benny Benson in a last man standing match. In 20 minutes, 2 seconds, when Benny Benson could not beat a 10 count. We have Greg Gage making defense number number 13 of his TCW World Television title. Yeah, number 13. Um, yeah, definitely a dominant champion. That's, that's for sure. But a 78 is pretty good. He, he was off his game as well. I just noticed that. So it could have been even higher. Because he only got a 75, and I think he's, I think his last match that he did in the, uh, or his last in-ring performance was like a 79, I think. I don't know. Anyway, moving on to a 92 rated angle with Aaron Andrews, of course, our current world heavyweight champion. And he's going into his steel cage match against Wolf Hawkins. No syndicate members will be allowed, well, they... They essentially, the syndicate members can't get involved due to the steel cage. So, it's going to be a, a fair match. Aaron Andrews, Wolf Hawkins. Doesn't do as good as I thought it would. I was hoping it would get over a 90. But 88 is still, it's pretty credible. It's, it's good enough, good enough. Um, and again, it's kind of just the announcing because... The in-ring performance from both these guys is probably good enough to get over a 90 in regards to the actual match itself. But yeah, we have Wolf Hawkins defeating Aaron Andrews in a cage match in 25-18 by pinfall with a full moon rising. Wolf Hawkins wins the TCW World Heavyweight title. New champion, Wolf Hawkins. Bit of a swerve. Didn't really want to take the title off Andrews this early. But this is all going to lead into my new storyline with uh, with Wolf. And of course, Jay Cord's eventually going to get his title shot. Aaron Andrews is going to have a title match rematch. Title rematch as well. Uh, this is all going to be based around the Syndicate now. And yeah, Wolf is essentially going to turn his back on the, on the Syndicate. And the syndicate is gonna gonna be no more, as he's now you know top dog, top wolf I guess. All right, let's finish the show. What do we get? We get an eighty six overall show rating for the war to settle the score. I'm pretty happy with that. I think that's a a pretty solid pay per view. Eighty six increasing popularity in eighteen regions again. 
And of course, that is all on our pay-per-view broadcasters as well. Now, I guess we, we've got to go for Wolf. We've got to go for Aaron Andrews. And I guess Jay Cord. We'll, we'll go the big three. And uh, we'll tell them that they're awesome. Because they were some pretty good in-ring performances. Actually, you know what? T-Bone Bright and Joshua Taylor. They kind of deserve some credit. Especially Joshua Taylor. Uh, I guess well, I'll go these three guys. Why not? I mean, as long as they're happy. It's kind of the, the most important thing. Alright, so another another month down, another pay-per-view down. Let's check how much money we actually make for the month of February. Alright. Who's this guy? Moriarty Schnell. Interesting name. Really good star quality. Uh, I think I want to sign this guy. He's got 81 charisma as well. It can kind of speak on the mic. Really good sex appeal and pretty good star quality. 20 years old. Uh, let's... Let's try and get him on a contract. I mean, what's his rival offer? Okay. How many years? Only two years. I would like to go 10... Because I think this guy is probably going to be a star down the line. Let's let's just, let's have a look. Let's have a look how much it's going to cost for for ten years, ironclad. Uh, I kind of want to offer him less, so let's let's go twenty four hundred. He wants fifteen thousand per month. Now I've got to, I've got to wonder to myself: this guy is eventually going to become. A big deal, in my opinion. Moriarty Schnell. It's got a wicked name. That is a that is that is a name and a half. But do I want to be paying fifteen thousand for the next, you know, two to three years before he actually becomes anything special? I feel like I kind of do, because I think it'll only take about three years. Before he gets up to a a decent level where we can actually push him. Ooh, uh, I think I'm going to do it. Yeah, I think I'm going to do it because I think he will become something special. Or at least I, I hope he will be if we're spending this much money. I mean, 15000 when you think about it really isn't that much anyway. When you consider like... Yeah, when you consider other workers. So he's he's eventually going to become Belter Bell Schnell. That's a that's a is that his actual name or No, he's the Sun-Kissed Superstar. Okay, that's that's uh that's an interesting nickname he's got there. The Schnell Shock finisher. I wonder if that's like a What was the guy's name? Ryback. The shell shock wasn't that his finisher? Yeah, interesting. I like him, man. He looks he he looks the part. He's got the sex appeal star quality, and he can cut a promo. So everything else, I think, will be able to sort out in regards to his in-ring performance. Just put him in a tag team with someone else. That's you know going to be pretty good. And I think uh, I think we'll we'll do well with him. Like I said, 15,000 is really not that much. For 10 years, you know, when he becomes a massive star. Uh, did I, hold on, did I do, did I do exclusive? I don't know if I did exclusive. I did, okay. Nice, all right. Schnell shock, yeah. Well, it says, it says it's a DDT, a variation of the DDT. So I guess it's essentially like a, a lifting DDT. 
similar to maybe Edge's old finisher. What was that? The Edgecution or something? Where he like lifts them up and then drops them like that. Yeah. I mean, that's a pretty, pretty cool finisher. I, I always like a DDT, so. Anyway, we got a buy rate of 0 0.53 with 267,000 buys. I think that's pretty good. All right, so we made $920,000, which is lower than January, but a couple of our attendances were a little bit lower. We had a couple of 7,000s in there. Uh, as you can see, we, we pretty much spent exactly the same. A little bit more on show costs, uh, but I'm assuming that might be because of the steel cage match and stuff like that. Uh, we also spent a lot more on miscellaneous. I'm guessing that goes up. That's probably scaled with our popularity. So yeah. Either way, we still made over 900,000 for that month. And uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, definitely pretty happy. Okay. Let's, uh, let's have a look at some uh, popularity. Let's have a look at titles first. So, did the world title go up? I think it did. I think it was 82 prestige, wasn't it? Yeah, current four-time champion, Wolf Hawkins. Uh, who essentially regained his title back after winning it. Uh, after losing it, sorry, to Aaron Andrews. Yeah, well done. Uh, the tag title is still at a 66. And the television title is still at a 60. Alright, that's not too bad. Uh, let's check some popularity. Hopefully Aaron didn't take a, a massive hit. Oh, that's a bit of a yikes. Four points of popularity down. From a, about an 83 down to a, a 79. Which, you know, his popularity was up. So it's we're only about two points away from where he started at. Let's uh let's check Wolf. So Wolf has not gained any popularity. Are you kidding me? He won the world title in an 88 rated match. Come on, man. Like He's got red hot momentum as well. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, let's check Joshua Taylor. And then we'll check uh, Jay Cord as well. Yeah, he didn't really gain any popularity that month either. I mean, he essentially gained one point, I guess. I mean, the, the wrestling industry is still pretty bad. So once that gets better, it should be easier for guys to, to gain popularity as well. Check Greg Gage. I think he gained a little bit, yeah. So he gained about two points a pop from the the month of February, which is a lot, lot lower than the 10 that he gained prior. And then finally, J Cord up to a 75, which is, well, I mean, he, he's definitely up from the, the 71 that he was at when we, uh, we started the game. So I think he'll, he'll make a, a decent challenger. Up next. I guess we let's check Sammy as well. Hopefully his popularity. I mean, just looking at it there, it's already taken a bit of a loss, have it? Yeah. I mean it went down and then it's gone back up a bit. So I can't be too upset with that really. 75 down to 70, and then back up to 73. Yeah, it's okay. That's okay. Uh let's check our size before we finish the stream here. Uh we are still at 75. Except for Hawaii in the US. And then we're up to some 63s in Canada as well. Which is very nice. I'm happy with that. Yeah, okay. Things are looking pretty good. Especially for our second second stream and second episode over on YouTube as well. Uh, so yeah. Thank you for watching guys. It's going to be the end of the stream, end of the episode. Make sure you give it a like if you're watching on YouTube and make sure you come over to the Twitch channel. The link for that will be in the descri 
the description down below where you can come and follow the live stream and you'll be able to watch the you'll be able to watch these episodes live. What could be better than that? Anyways, apart from that guys, take it easy as always and goodbye.